happy to announce the launch of our new logo. We have evolved since our incorporation in 1997 and it is time to refresh our new look to reflect who we are today. Before I reveal our new look, however, walk with me while I take you through our journey of the last 25 years. Trust Bank was incorporated on July 3rd, 1997 and began operations on October 1st, 1997. Following the collapse of the parent company of its predecessor, Meridian, the CBG stepped in and recapitalized the bank and held the shares in trust, thus the name Trust Bank. In 1999, the first investors who responded to the IPO and paid $1.50 per share received their maiden dividend of 50 bututs per share. In 2000, the bank fully paid back its investment by declaring another dividend of $1.20 per share, making it a cumulative dividend per share of $1.70, which was 20 bututs above the purchase price. Between 2002 to date, share capital has increased from $27 million to $200 million, indicating that the bank has grown organically by plowing back profits to increase capital, while at the same time paying dividends to shareholders. The bank was listed on the Ghana Stock Exchange in November 2002, being the first ever cross-border listing in the sub-region. Now let's talk about awards. The bank was awarded the insignia of the National Order of the Republic of the Gambia, ORG, in the year 2010 by His Excellency the President of the Republic of the Gambia. During the past years, the bank has received so many national and international awards. Banker Magazine, six times. Global Finance, six times. Gambia Chamber of Commerce and Industry, five times. We began operations with three branches. Now, we have 18 branches and 20 ATMs and counting. On digital services, mobile app, check. Online banking, check. Transaction alerts, check. Watch this space, we've got more coming. Creating employment, yes, we've got that too. 400 and counting. And we take great care of our people too. Medical insurance, life insurance, private and state pensions, annual pilgrimages for both Muslims and Christians, training, yes, we do them all. One team, one family, one goal. That's the Trust Bank spirit. On corporate social responsibility, we have spent over $50 million in various courses. We care, and so we share. Over the years, we have paid over $1.6 billion to our shareholders, which translates to a whopping $20 per share and counting. Phenomenal returns for our shareholders who purchased at $1.50. Corporate taxes, over $1 billion is paid. Our journey started with a vision to create the kind of company that delivers quality services and innovative products with an inspired team dedicated to serving our customers, our environment, and our communities at large in the most caring manner. We remain fully committed to delivering excellent services to each of our stakeholders customers, employees, shareholders, and partners. So, we remain true to who we have always been. As we look forward to greater achievements, we are rebranding to reflect who we are today and the future that we inspire. Our new logo has been designed to visually demonstrate our Gambian heritage and the sophisticated nature of the bank. We are moving away from the navy and gold-colored parallelogram-shaped logo to our baobab tree with a rising sun in the background. The striking outline of our baobab tree at sunrise is a familiar sight to anyone who has spent time in the Gambia. Our new logo and visual identity are inspired by our core values and spirit of being a pioneer in providing a unique banking experience. It is a completely new look that better matches the transformation we have made as a company. But we remain your trust bank. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my singular honor to present to you our new logo and corporate identity. For the first time in the history of the Gambia, Gambia Printing Publishing Corporation proudly introduces the Bibliomatic Exercise Book Printing Machine. The machine has the capacity to print more than 20,000 books per hour. Yes, 20,000 books per hour. It also prints magazines, newspapers, calendars, flyers, normal books and all kinds of printed documents plus items at affordable prices. 
With the Bulamatic printing machine, GPPC can now render high quality and non size restricted printing service supply across the sub region. Rush now and partner with GPPC for all your public and private printing service needs. Print with us today and you'd be offered highly professional, reliable and efficient service delivery by our team of experts. The Gambia Printing and Publishing Corporation is here to meet all demands and is reliable at all times. For more info, contact us on 437-4493 or 437-4402. GPPC is Gambian and it's yours. On the reason I have always called for a national dialogue is because a government must be responsive to the needs of its people. Fatu. Tell me one thing, if I'm me as drink. an individual, if I know that there is somebody that I definitely wrong, yeah. I will be bold enough, I will go to the party, I will appeal to him and apologize him. decision today because I don't make decisions lightly. I investigate. I do my research. I get the facts. I call the experts. I, I summon meetings. I get the technician. Then I reflect and I make a decision. Why did you lose the election? Well, we lost the election because of treatment registration. We had evidence that people didn't register before the opening of the registration. edition of our show. Uh, sorry about the earlier issues, technical issues. Of course, with me, Esa. Mm -hmm. Esa, welcome back. Thank you. And of course, we have some students are, some students former army commander and also the American diplomat at the UN. Thank you. And of course, our man, Sid, is in the building. Sid, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. This is my boss. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, today we're going to talk about some regional issues, um, the coup in Niger and also the situation in Senegal. Um, bef just before we came in, uh, ECOWAS did issue a statement at that extra ordinary session saying um, they are invoking, what, what, what is exactly is that they are invoking? The standby force. The standby force so to, to invade uh, Niger, but they want to start with diplomacy. Mm. They have activated that already. Mm. Uh, but the junta is also saying if anybody tries to invade, they will kill the president. 
Um, looking at the entire situation, Sam, what do you think should be ECOWAS role now? What should they do? Yes, um, thank you for having me here. In the first place, I don't even think ECOWAS has a ready-made, prepared standby force to go anywhere. Because a standby force for this kind of operation needs rigorous training, a lot of materials, studying the terrain, and uh, a very good intelligence of the enemy you're going to face. ECOWAS has together worked to intervene for peacekeeping and peace enforcement, far different from mm -hmm. military confrontation. What would you call what we have here? ECOWAS came here in 2016. Yes, that was just a military intervention without even any resistance. Mm -hmm. Because it, they call it, in fact, that is why they call it stabilizing force, you know, because they needed to justify their presence. Because Jamie, who could have given them the fight they were coming for, never put up any resistance. He left before their arrival. But I believe there was a suspicion about the, um, the personnel in the army who threw out, well before Jamie was taken out, we are given, we are, we, are, we, are, we are told around this world that they were all MFDC rebels. You know, like they, they, it was all over the world that the GNA was full of MFDC rebels and that, you know, we need a security reform to really get, get rid of the bad cows before we can trust a government without... Uh, uh, without Jame, like the Adam and So, but indeed, uh, actually, there was no resistance. So they came, stabilizing force is different. I had one Ghanaian this morning from the um, Kofi Annan Institute. Institute in Ghana saying that, well, we have done it in the Gambia, we can do it in Niger. <laughs> that was a dumb statement <laughs> because the, it's, are yeah, they're different. And uh, what I am looking at in Niger, is a coup d'etat that is irreversible in the way they want it done. You know, so my recommendation at this juncture would have been to tell them to <clears throat> now go and look at the option of negotiating with the coup makers to shorten their stay in office for a transitional government as soon as possible. That is negotiable. But anything otherwise, Nobody's going to accept it in Niger. It's a very popular coup. I was giving you the difference between different coups. Yeah. This is a coup that they call some kind of a guardian coup. Mm -hmm. Guardian coups are usually very popular mm -hmm. because the soldiers see something that they want to correct and uh, the people believe, yes, it's necessary to correct it. You know, and uh, one of, uh, I believe one of the things they are really focusing on right now is the fact that Mali and Burkina Faso have recently conducted coups geared towards this objective of shivering their relationship permanently with France, yeah. which since independence had signed this agreement with them to remain overseeing everything they do in their former colonies, including even how they run their economy, how they control their resources, where to sell them, even how to train their own soldiers. France, in 1960, before independence, signed a treaty with all these former colonies and say, you cannot even train your soldiers anywhere other than in France. And if you are to go to any other country for training, you have to get our permission first. So that is why, you know, the, the, you know, the French soldiers, African, you know, sorry, the former colonies have soldiers who are, how would I put it, French nice, <laughs> you know, indoctrinated in French doctrine to an extent where when French, France say jump, it's like how high. Most of the coup d'etats in Africa, before we start questioning the, uh, the rationale behind coup d'etat, we are conducted by the French. Anybody who move against the French, France will say, take him out. As recent as in Chad, 
you know, because I understand Idris Deby mm -hmm. went to a meeting in France, perhaps out of maturity and, you know, being disoriented with all this, you know, s s s s s service to France, he made a remark to the effect that if we don't cut off this franc safer, we will never be able to develop because we will continue paying loans upon loans and this country will never develop. He said it within a short time, they said he was killed in the battlefield. The constitution of Chad at that time said that when the president dies, the National Assembly comes in, the president of the national takes over the government for three months, conduct election free and fair, and it's over. But no, the son whom I understand is not even a son but an adopted child, was encouraged by the friend to, 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 to take over. Throw away the constitution, organize a coup d'etat, and the guy was celebrated in France because he is, you know, um, he is going along with what France wants. So um, that's why I think <coughs> it is Fran the, the Europeans who are pushing this agenda, especially the Europeans, because they need Niger's uranium and the gold, lots of it for their nuclear reactors, nuclear energy. So they don't want to lose Niger. They have already lost Mali and Burkina Faso. Mm -hmm. If yeah. Niger goes, they have, it might be have ripple effect. Others will say, let's do it. So I think, to me, I don't see it changing. You know, I just wish they will come up with the idea of, let's negotiate with these guys and see how soon they can go out, like what happened in Mali yeah. in 1992, was it 1991, with... Um, uh, ATT. <laughs> yes, that guy who took over power and he within six months... I'm not Mali. ATT, Mali, yeah, yes. he came back, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Organized election. You know, that's it. That was another, another um, guardian coup. It happened in Mali. But um, I don't know, but I definitely don't think... Um, intervention is even possible. They will talk about it probably to just face, say, say face because they have threatened. First, it was like deadline when Seven days, yeah. That you know, days, yeah, yeah, and uh, you know, the whole world said it's not going to happen. I was saying it's not going to happen, <laughs> and uh, I don't think it's going to happen because. I but first, uh, said let's look at the reason why could it us in general. Look at. In, 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 in Niger, when this coup d'etat happened, the people came out and celebrated. In fact, when the UN diplomats came, they were chasing them away. They didn't want them to neg negotiate. They were celebrating the army. And this is something that even ordinary folks will say, no, we don't want coup d'etat in our countries. But now it seems like people are celebrating coups. I see it even on social media when we post stuff about this Niger coup, the reaction you see from people, this is good. Don't allow them to come to your country. It seems like people are getting tired of the the natural rule that is happening we now. Businesses. Why do we? Why do you think that is the situation now in in, in Africa? Well, I think it's a. I would say maybe it's a different generation. It's a it's a new generation. You know, new generation. Then Tanga Hall. Wow. So they want to see things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, fat, fat. Yeah. Um, I, I, I think that could be uh, could be one explanation. I mean, because these are generation that have you know. I mean, today Africans are more educated than they were before in terms of the number of schools. I'll take Gambia for example. I mean, uh, with the coming of the university, we have more people with degrees and all those things. So, with the increase in education, there is expectation. Uh, I mean, awareness, engagement you know, um, uh, matters within those contexts. And, and I think for me, that's one, one factor. And if you look at all these different countries, you look at the way young people react, is these are not things that they hear every day, but these are things that are also taught in school in terms of this relationship that he was trying to describe, especially with, um, uh, with France. And, and, and so the, the frustration is not mostly about, you know, European countries or France, but it's also about their system mm -hmm. and how their system to a large extent have ignored them have sidelined them, and their voice do not even count. And so you see, so, so for us, we argued in the article that it's not just about because they want to celebrate coup, but they feel like coups are more ways of, um, you know, removing their enemies in, 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 in a sense. And in the short term, 
it is welcome and and you know it is it is it is kind of accepted but of course coup d'etats usually come with counter coups especially mm -hmm. if you know um the opportunity to stabilize is uh, is lacking so even right now we're not even sure i mean to what extent because we see f photos of young people here and there but in terms of the population how, how popular it is but based on afrobarometer survey we've also um you know i think last time we even quoted it that 67 percent um of nigerian believe that if the leader is not doing what they're supposed to do or abuse office then the military have you know uh, the yeah the right to to intervene you know we're talking about almost seven out of every ten nigerian mm -hmm. accepting that mm -hmm. but if you look at why that perhaps one of the explanation is also niger has a long history of coup d'etat this is yeah. not the first time you know it happened almost four years four or five Monday. yeah so it happened all the so that country um has that history people perhaps have lived to realize that coup do also work and i think that's why also with ECOWAS intervention they also need to start thinking about what do the local people want, what do they see, yeah. and not just about the military or the former leader, but about mm -hmm. the everyday the everyday citizen. I think those are important elements that they need to consider in terms of this whole framework of intervention. What do these people want? Yeah. And at the end of the day, I think that could um, help. Yeah. yeah, I wanted to just come in for a minute. Yeah. Uh, sorry yeah. about that. <clears throat> and uh, that is to say that, as a matter of fact, at one point, in the evolution of African <coughs> politics, especially West African politics, in the post-Cold War era, mm -hmm. people were disoriented about coups. Mm -hmm. Because during the Cold War, we all knew how the Eastern Bloc and the Western Bloc fought proxy wars, encouraged one coup to another to suit their political agenda mm -hmm. or philosophical um, ideas mm -hmm. or even economic system, you know, like Ethiopia, Mengistu Mariam, you know, like you had um, uh, Burkina Faso, um, uh, Thomas Sankara, you know. So at some point when the Cold War ended, there was this argument that, well, this talk of war is over because Russia or Russia was marginalized, brought down to an extent where the way they used to challenge the Western wall ceased. Because when Russia was Russia, they were not going to allow the invasion of Iraq. They would have done everything to stop it. But the Americans did it on a false pretext and they just didn't intervene. Then they went to Libya. In Libya, Russia had a lot of interest there. So many Russians were working for the Libyan government. But when the NATO invaded Libya, they all pulled out and they destroyed Libya. That is why when they wanted to go to Syria, they say no. But what I want to say is that mm -hmm. at some point, people were saying that, well, the talk of war, of cool countries, we should let it go now. Let's forget about it. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, we start co considering how are we going to stop it. Okay, we got, even um, ECOWAS came out with real good resolutions how to yeah. stop coup. How we going? But then, all of a sudden, the idea of decolonization, which was something fought for by our previous our forebears, you know, and uh, they failed. Like the Kwame Kormas, the Momodu Jazz of Senegal. But is it that they, they, they just, you know, germinated the seed and allow it to, to germinate? Yes. Because this generation of Africans also yeah. are looking towards that. Like the, the coup is in um, Burkina Faso. Mm -hmm. He's, he's recla I mean, reclaiming the identity of Sankara and people are already yes. aligning. Yes. So for me, I feel the generation did not fail. But they've, I mean, at least um, kind of still inspire the discussions and conversations that we are still having today. Yes, but the consciousness level, yes. The consciousness yeah. level was, I, I always, I used to attribute it to education, mm -hmm. but the digital wall, yeah. Yeah. whether you are in school or not. Yeah. Yes. You know, yes. you see yes. even an old man in the streets. <laughs> yeah. That's what they do now. Uh, yeah. equality. So there is fast distribution of ideas and information going so fast and you don't need to I go to school the majority of africans especially sub west africa now mm -hmm. france is our disaster yeah. france has been really putting their knees on our necks for too long 
And unless we take it out, we will not survive. France, even France, they are threatened by this awareness level. Yeah. You know, and I think even, you know, even if you go to Senegal, I, I think that's why Sonko is so much in trouble. Because he came out with this concept of Les Shiva, that colonial agreement, which Momoduja talked about, and he was jailed for almost 20 years. Bolandenjai, the same thing, he was killed. Bolande Job killed. And uh, Seh Ante Job, they got rid of him. Sekuture, you know, Sekuture was like, they almost literally drove that guy to craziness because he was the first one to say, no, I'm not going to sign this agreement with Modi Boketa. Mm -hmm. And look at what they did to Sekuture. Sekuture suffered so badly. Yeah. I remember in my book, you probably may, re, re, may have read it, um, Meet Me in Konakere. Uh, that's a long... It, it, yeah. it, it, it reflected, yeah. it, it reflected yeah, in the, the, the antagonism <laughs> between Senegal and, 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 uh, and Guinea Konakere at that time. Mm -hmm. And even Manson Moduja... So, so you wrote that book? Yes. Even Moduja... I know something in South, but I couldn't get a rich something. <laughs> yeah, it's it. Okay. Okay. I mean, I, I, I don't know why that book is out of, you know, I mean, yeah. sorry, why is, yeah, it's where are the of, copies? As a matter of fact, it is around, I want to oh, rewrite it. Like Sam Sar yeah. for you, yeah, so. Yeah, because when, when, when you Sam, read Sam a book, Sar, even yeah. this book I wrote in 2006, 2006, I am revising it because I know how to write better since then. Now, Miti Konaki, I need to write, but it reflected the colonial um, the colonial suppression of Guinea Conakry. I talk about it there, where even at some point, France developed two mercenary forces. One at um, uh, in in one in Yoff, Dakar, and the other guess where? Burfoot here. Mercenary camp. You know they train them, and they launch an attack to Guinea Conakry. But when they were leaving. I think I don't know what happened in their arrangement to lift the mercenaries from Burfoot, but the ones from Dhaka went in and almost succeeded in taking over the country. It was this force from Kindia that rebelled against the revolution, uh, the, the, the rebellion, mm -hmm. and I think that was the second president of Guinea. What's his name? Um, uh, the, the military guy. Um, Conde. Con oh, Conte. Conte. Yeah, yes. yeah, he Conte. was the yeah. one. Who said we are not going to accept it and roll from Kindia to cross the coup d'etat? They arrested everybody. Secretary called Jawara and said there are still men in Burfoot. And there was this very popular sergeant they used to call Sergeant Dubuya. He was the one who went and arrested them. <laughs> and they sent them to all of them to Conakry. Of course, the Western world was very upset about that because they were all hung at the stadium. I still remember that. Uh -huh. And I mentioned it in my book. Uh -huh. So I'm just telling you the tension and how Senegal mm -hmm. was used by the French at that time to destroy any country that was going against France. But now that has changed. It cannot be that glaring where you get mercenaries go and kill him or get him and kill him. You know, people, the awareness level is too much now yeah. for that yeah. to happen. Yeah. And telephone, social And that transition is going on now. That is why it is going to be very difficult to reverse what is happening okay. right now. In Niger. It cannot be business as before. No, governments have to change. They have to change their way of doing things. That old fashion, even Af Africa, it affected us. I remember Kwame Kurma used to call Jawara British boy, especially when the Queen called both of them to knight them. And uh, Kwame Kulma said it was an insult to his in intelligence. And Jawara went and he was knighted and given the Sar. The Sar yeah. title. Yeah. yeah. Okay. At the same time, they invited them. And, they, you know, so <laughs> I have written about that too. Wow. <laughs> it's it's interesting. Interesting. No, interesting. For, for it's, it's always, it's yeah. always good but, to. But Esther, talking about ties with the West. You know, it seems like at this point, the, the people of Niger really, they welcome the coup. Is governance not about the people? If the people are saying, we are, we are happy with what is happening in our country, but the ECOWAS is saying no, because a lot of people say, you know, France and the US and other powers don't want the military because of their interests. 
Should that be the role of ECOWAS to protect the, in the interests of the West and forget about our people uh, to the point of trying to intervene in, in Niger? Well, I, I don't think I will look at it from that perspective because um, if it is about the people, okay, the people of Niger want coup, okay, fine. And then, okay, another country says we want coup as well, okay, fine. Then there wouldn't be any constitutional order. Um, because coup d'etat in the first place are unconstitutional, mm -hmm. so it will be difficult for a for a sub regional block like ECOWAS to say. So, well, so for me, I mean, no, I, 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 so I, I was, I was yet to when that. you say they are unconstitutional, there are so many coup d'etats that are happening in our countries daily. Yes, People well, changing the constitution to their interest. That's coup d'etat too. And ECOWAS don't even say. I will, I will, I will get to that point. I will get to that point. But let us have to address this because okay. um, yeah. it will, it will really be crazy. <laughs> One to say, okay, because the civilians. Um, yeah, welcome because the that's what they want. Okay. So. Because that's what they want. But also, you have to understand that there are some civilians who don't welcome the coup. That's yeah. true. So you have to know. Yeah. If you say, okay, maybe the stadium was jam packed, mm -hmm. you know, fill up, you know, and people celebrating. But if you should probably organize another rally, those who are against the coup probably is going to be the same. Yep. So yeah. who are the people here? Okay. Some people will come out, the Nigerians will come out and say, we support the coup, but there are others too who don't support the coup. Yeah. So but what is important here is there must be constitutional order. Mm -hmm. okay. And I, I understand your point when you talked about um, um, ECOWAS not addressing some of the root causes of coup d'etat. I will get to that. Um, just like Said said, this is not the first time and Niger Republic is experiencing military coup. Um, Post-independence Africa, if you look at it, I think, um, you know, Saab talked about, you know, that, like um, from the 1960s, um, when um, most African leaders at the time, the likes of Kwame Nkrumah, um, said, after independence now, what is needed is um, national unity and economic development. And one way to foster that for them um, was to have one party states. Let's have one political party, one president, one ideology, and all that. And if you look at it critically, that was a, that was a factor as to why there were military coups in Africa, mm -hmm. because there was no opportunity. Um, I mean, electorally, to change some of these governments, and that's why in 1966, um, this was just um, I think um, nine years after Ghana attained independence, there was a coup in Ghana against um, Kuruma himself. But um, eventually, it, it, you know, it started um, spreading across the continent. Um, Niger experienced its first military coup in 1974. There was another one in 1996, and there was another one too in 1999. And suddenly in 2010, there was another one. By the way, um, 2000, 2021, there was, an, there was an attempt. This was not successful against the same President Bazoum. This was, I think, days before his um, mm -hmm. swearing in, there was an attempt, um, attempted coup. That was 2021. And all of a sudden, 2023, again, we have seen a successful coup. And just like he rightly explained, um, <clears throat> the different types of coups. You look at the Guardian coup, the Veto coup, the Breakthrough coup. Yeah. And then we used to have more of Veto, sorry, um, Breakthrough coups. Because, yes. you know, if you look at Ethiopia, um, Emparo Haile Men Salafi, Mengistu Mariam. Mengistu Mariam came through a Breakthrough coup. Mm -hmm. And Liberia, that was in 1974. That's in 1974 because, you know, a long standing yeah. autocratic mm -hmm. leader. That's a breakthrough. You know, Liberia and other places. Veto coup, yeah, sometimes the military will look at, okay, their interest is, is, is at stake. They have to intervene. But if you look at, like Seth said, the current generation, the coups that we have now, more of Guardian. Guardian in the sense that it's not only that the military is complaining about a, a government, because mostly some of these leaders that are even removed, some of them will not even spend um, five years in power or 10 years in power, 15 years in power. So they, they will not leave, um, they will not um, be in power as long as um, Emperor Haile Selassie was, mm -hmm. as long as Jawara was, mm -hmm. as long as um, um, other leaders were the at the time, Kenneth Kaundas, the Sengors, um, the, the, the Jomo Kenyatas and all that. But what they are saying is, look, there is rampant corruption, <clears throat> there is some um, 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 mismanagement of resources and then external interest as well, external influence um, mm -hmm. coming from the former colonial powers, especially France. So what we have now, and I will agree with him more, is a guardian coup. And the military feels like they have a moral duty. It's not a right, it's not that constitutional they have any right to intervene. And um, if you if you watch um, Sana Sabali's um, testimony at the TRRP, mm -hmm. when he said, well, we had to intervene. But, and the lead council was like, but you have no right to come and rescue. 
But so when I was listening to that, for me, soldier. <laughs> exactly. For me, <laughs> Sana, Sana would, would be saying, yes, we have a, we have to intervene. No, in fact, he said he has a constitutional right. Exactly, constitutional That's, right. You and I was no... expecting the um, uh, lead council yeah, to tell him yeah. what part of the constitution yeah, are you You have quoting? no constitutional <laughs> right, but the military what? also feel like because the civilian it. population are <laughs> helpless <laughs> now. Yeah. There is no way out. We have to rescue. <laughs> so they feel like they have a moral duty or responsibility or obligation kind of to rescue the civilian <laughs> population from rampant mm -hmm. corruption, mismanagement, and all that. And that's why we look at even the 94 coup. Um, he could tell us better. But you got to see an element of what? A breakthrough coup, an element of um, veto Guardian. coup, an element of guardian, guardian coup. coup. Because the military together. came and said, even though they were not talking about the veto aspect, because people will say, okay, their interests, mm -hmm. they, their living condition was not good. But they were not talking about that. They were more talking about what? The rampant corruption, Social, right? yeah. okay, mm. the mismanagement of resources and all that. So they felt like they have a moral responsibility. And if you look at coups that are happening recently in Guinea, in Burkina Faso, in Mali, in Niger, the, 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 the narrative the military will put out there is that we have to rescue the state. Mm -hmm. We have a moral responsibility to rescue the state. And this is where all these things are happening. Coming to ECOWAS, um, I, I watched the session today, the meeting today. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't a surprise that it was there because at some point, like you said, <laughs> it's all saber rattling. Yeah, it's a bit, so, it's a bit late. It's all saber rattling. They came and said Trust we me. will intervene. Yeah. So <laughs> if they fail to intervene, if they fail, if they should just backtrack now to just say that in fact intervention is out of the way now, options now, that is stuff. going to cause reputational damage as well, and it's just going to expose the weakness of ECOWAS. I mean, you mean what is left of it? Huh? The reputational damage <laughs> of what is left of it. Like because that. I mean, what like... Of it. So, so you will tend to have that. And that is why you have to maintain that. But uh, you raise a very important point. And why, what is ECOWAS doing? It's not only for them to wait for there to be military coups, because we also Thank have you. constitutional coups taking place, right? I mean, um, somebody being in power trying to manipulate the constitution. Um, <clears throat> if you look at um, which, which country, again, in Africa experience that I think... Um, it was during the co I mean post independence post independent uh, post Cold War era. Mm -hmm. um, you know Zambia, mm -hmm. Zambia experienced that when um, Kenneth Kaunda tried to doctor the constitution to prevent mm -hmm. um, Pascal um, Lisuba yeah. from mm -hmm. contesting elections, and you know there were there were there was an outcry. People mm -hmm. talking about now we are moving towards democratization. There was a third wave democratization. Instead of organizing free fair elections, because this guy came to power, Lisuba, Lisuba came to power, not Kawunda. Lisuba came to power through elections. And when he came to power, he manipulated the constitution to prevent um, Kawunda from organizing yeah, yeah, yeah. From, from contesting elections. Mm -hmm. And people are like, now we are moving towards democratization. I think the good thing to do is like you and that's why the other time I raised this issue. Sometimes our opposition politicians, when they are in opposition, they will say all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Everything Get bad. And once mm -hmm. they are in power, they forget that they were once in opposition. Imagine Lusuba no, was in good. opposition. Mm -hmm. Elections were organized by Kawunda, then went to, went to elections and won, and now he went to parliament to use the majority in parliament to change the constitution to prevent this man from contesting elections. Mm -hmm. yes. You look at what is yes. happening in Senegal. Yes. Makisal was in opposition. Mm -hmm. Eventually came to power, doing you know, things that were, were not even done to him when he was in opposition. Mm -hmm. You come to the Gambia. President Barrow, the same thing. So at some point, they tend to forget mm -hmm. that they were once in opposition and they, they were complaining about some of these things. So constitutional coups are taking place. And that is why when I listened to um, Halifa Salam, um, I think on Coffee Time two days ago, mm -hmm. um, he made a very important point that at this stage, what we need, what ECOWAS could do is to have constitutional convergence. This convergence will be so they focus on how do we get our leaders respect the constitution. Mm -hmm. Not only respecting the constitution, mm -hmm. but by organizing free, fair, transparent, and genuine election. And by genuine elections, what he was talking about is nobody should be intimidated or have, have or nobody should be influenced the way or, you should even go. Or deny yeah. the right. And, nobody and should be denied the Africa, right. To. They might not come with guns like it. Um, once happened in 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 in, in um, Equatorial Guinea, Marcus Ndema, <laughs> one election was organized, <laughs> and the where the military will come <laughs> election day. You know, opposition should vote this way. Um, but those that want to vote for the government will vote. And the military guy is standing with a gun. Obviously, we are, which 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 candidate are you going to vote for? So what he was talking about is that at this stage, um, there shouldn't be any form of intimidation. Not only intimidation physically, 
but nobody should in, in fact the issue of um vote buying for example um you know um inducements, yeah. and inducements and all that these things happen in our elections mm. so for him when we talk about free fair and transparent elections elections should also be genuine okay i shouldn't be influenced let's say by money or whatever to, to be able to vote for somebody that I wouldn't have wished to vote for mm -hmm. in the first place. So that constitutional convergence is calling for that is urgently needed within the ECOWAS subregion. Mm -hmm. And once ECOWAS is able to do that, because the leadership of ECOWAS is the, pre the, are the presidents of these countries. Another it's the same issue, yeah, yeah, yeah. So if they are, we're talking about today, the meeting. When I watched the meeting and I saw Macky Sall seated there, I was like, this man should have been removed from this. What about Alassane Ouattara? Alassane Watra was bitter, I was told, that they have been bitter. <laughs> but he was the one who doctored the constitution. And killed a lot of people to so go for the third time. So, was talking about um, the president situation, the Ustek president situation right now, that he's running low on food, the family not having access to electricity. Mm -hmm. And I said, here is a man seated, Makisar, who did equally the same thing, or worse, to an opposition figure in Senegal, who is currently hospitalized. His situation is just deteriorated. The family was living, like, on the house arrest, it was not only Sonko, but the entire family. The kids could not go to school. The wives could not go out. Nobody at ECOWAS even talk about that. So because now it is done to someone, and that is why it is important. I'm not justifying coup, but it's important that the presidents also understand. Today, the whole world is talking about the president, the Ustep president being in that situation. Running low on food. But they forget that there are ordinary citizens every day who go to bed. As a matter of fact, I went without to, food. I went to <laughs> come without, there. We, how many times no, do we sit here 11 hours without, without electricity. electricity? Now there are, and you are telling us there is no electricity. As a matter of Nobody fact. Nobody will talk about that. But now animal, the president's no, family so is animal not yeah. so Apparently, let me just come in one minute here. What I'm, in fact, this is a talking point they got from the West. The first person to talk about the condition of this guy's this living condition was... Blinkens. Yeah, Secretary of State. Yes, yeah. Blinkens and all, and, and Macron, they yep. say he doesn't even have electricity. Yeah, he's running low on food. Yeah. But what they did not talk about mm -hmm. is that soon after this, these guys took over, the sanctions included cutting the grid that supplies Niger electricity. Mm. Did they talk about the hospitals? Those who are in emergency, kids in incubators, who were all denied electric supply, that doesn't matter to them. But Bazum is suffering because he doesn't have electricity. You're talking about a lot of people dying in their hospitals because Nigeria, that supplies them 70% of their electricity. Cut it off. Who talk about that? And... Nigeria really broke an agreement that they shouldn't have because they agreed with Niger around the 60s to refrain from damming the river Niger that will sabotage their agricultural work in, Niger, in Nigeria if they, if they dam it. But with the kind of dam you could build in Niger, it could have supplied even chart with electricity. But they depended exclusively on Nigeria for an electricity signed and agreed upon after independence. Don't worry, don't damn it, we'll always. But why did they just cut it off? I think that should have gone to the Senate, that should have been thought about. What about the children, the schools, the hospitals, those who are, you know, before you even cut that electricity? Yeah. But I mean, can I, can I say something? You see, sometimes this is where the, when I look at interventions, yeah. or when, you know, okay, Limo here, so we're going to intervene to to fix this problem. Sometimes we create more problems. Now, now like, so for you now, what you, I mean, so for me, the, the question then is, why, like, cutting the electricity? How does that affect the Jews that I don't? Yeah, but then the idea is that the people will be mad, the and when the people are mad, then they will push the, the junta away. You know, they, you there's, there's, them? Yeah, there's, there's one study. Yes. But for me, I think like some of these issues also need to be, I mean, need to be considered. They galvanize, I mean, in fact, the spirit of the masses. Of to course, say you know, they get frustrated. That's an enemy, you know. Yeah. The people yeah. easily come together when they see an external enemy. Yeah. And, and, and talking about this external influence, I mean, before getting to that, let me let me just rectify it because when I was talking about the Kawunda thing, I mentioned Pascal de Suba. It's Frederick Chiluba. Yeah, Chiluba. Not, yeah. not, not mm -hmm. the Suba. So, but um, looking at the external <clears throat> influence, um, and that, this reminds us exactly of proxy war. 
which happened during the Cold War era. Indeed. Um, you had the Eastern Bloc and the um, the Western Bloc mm -hmm. fighting. Well, they wouldn't fight physically, directly. There will be no direct military confrontation, but there will be camps. You look at what happened in, um, in Angola, for example, between the MPLA and the unitary rebel um, movements who were supported, <laughs> exactly, were supported by these different camps. So right now what we're talking about, which is really, really sad and unacceptable in this day and age, 21st century, um, we're talking about the presence of Wagner forces um, in Niger, which is unacceptable. We shouldn't even have that in the first place. But we're also talking about French forces being present in some of these um, 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 countries. So why do we have, in Africa today, why do we have foreign forces stationed on the African soil, okay, to the extent that today, our own problems, our own problems, now people have started analyzing geopolitical analysis or arguments that, okay, once um, there is military intervention from ECOWAS, well, Wagner forces are there mm -hmm. to support the, the, the military in Niger, mm -hmm. and the, the French might join, and there's going to be... So it, it's really crazy. And when the president came, and he, when he landed, um, Barro himself, when he landed, he was interviewed, and he talked about the readiness of ECOWAS, and of course, their partners um, to, 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 to intervene once um, the military um, failed to um, abide by you know, what, what they told them. So you get to realize that, look, is it that our, our organizations, our sub-regional and regional organizations um, are not even taking decisions in, independently? Like, are they taking decisions independently or they take decisions at some point with level of yes, external influence? Yes, sir, you look at the money. guiding their decisions. So, so what I'm trying to say is that, for me as a concerned African today, be it the West, be it Russia, we shouldn't even be having external forces mm -hmm. present on mm -hmm. our soil. Yeah kind of influencing how we should solve some of this problem. Today, we shouldn't be talking about coups. Like I've always said, for me, coup d'etat is not, it's not the solution. Okay? Because, because I haven't seen a military government that has really come and replaced a civilian government and address all those problems that they've been complaining about. So coup d'etat for me, like I said, is unconstitutional. It shouldn't be the way out. Today, people should not even be celebrating coup. But the reason why... You push people to the corner to the extent that they are telling you that we even prefer coup. It's just like today, the conversation in this country. You get it gets to the point that some people will tell you that look, in fact, Ajame was better than Baro. Imagine, imagine a military a military regime all, with all what happened in this country for 22 years, the brutalities and everything. People will sit in their corners and say, in fact, we should have left Jame here. That is, I always tell people that I will never ever prefer. Jame to Baro. That's never. correct. I, I will do. never do that. I, I agree. My, in my, I definitely I, my, agree. Let's have Baro. I agree. Better than having Jame. I, I agree. Okay, but you get people in their corners. Yes, yeah, that's my. Yeah, that's and my with Baro, you can struggle with I him. So you can deal with him. He said, yes. I think that's what yes. I said. And, and, it's better than having Jame. It's better than I think, having a military thing. I've said that constantly. Baro, and I will still maintain I think, that let's have our civilian governments, but also we must try to fix our problems. And this has to do with one. Our civilian governments being, in fact, sometimes they turn to be more dictatorial than the military government. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's true. Do you understand that you talk about? Look at what is happening in Senegal. Okay? So that constitutional convergence is needed. In as much as we condemn coup, and I want to say, and I'm, I'm on record, that I condemn military coup, for me personally, is not the solution, okay, to these problems. But we must, our leaders must also be serious. We must have a constitutional convergence. Let them respect the constitution. Let there be rule of law. But they also organize elections that are free, fair, transparent, and genuine, so that some of these problems will... Today, if we should have, let's say, term limits in our constitutions, we have our governments, our leaders respecting the constitution, okay, respecting opposition politics. Because you talk about ECOWAS, look at even the protocol on good governance, okay? When you look at that, at some point, Article 10 is even talking about non-intimidation of political opponents. But we are yeah. seeing what is happening in Senegal and other places. So it's important that... I, I can understand sometimes the challenges that ECOWAS might face, but it's important that they are very, um, they are very um, 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 straightforward with some of these leaders. We know it is the leadership, but also you have some, you know, people that are making decisions at the level of ECOWAS. Um, and Gambia, of course, has a role to play, a very important role to play in this. I know we'll get to the to, to the Gambia, um, where the Gambia should live in because because I I think I saw your interview. On that, but Gambia has a, a very important role to play in this because the president <laughs> of the commission is from the Gambia, and of course, President Barrow is also part of this, part and parcel of it. They're all making the decision jointly. 
So we got to be careful. But I will leave that with you as the experts. Apparently. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah, they, 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 now that they, mm -hmm. they, they want to intervene, and uh, Burkina Faso and Mali are saying, you come, we are going to join Niger. Mm -hmm. What kind of risk is this posing for the region? Is this the way forward right now? I mean, I think I, I think whether it's an impasse or, or a stalemate or whatever we can call it, that might be too early. But I, I, I am also thinking, I mean, this is just bluff. Everybody is bluffing right you now. Think it's a bluff? I, I mean, like, you don't think Bukina, you see, all these different countries, mm -hmm. you know, like they have their own internal problems. They are fighting mm -hmm. jihadists. They are fighting wars there, that they there, don't. There is what we call muscle flexing. Yeah, yeah muscle flexing. Flex. Yeah, yeah. So for bluffing me, I would say it's bluffing. Bluffing. But it's a, it's a serious bluffing. It's not something that we just take lightly because. Um, of course, they are all military, and now they are seeing themselves as a different from this other um, possible, I mean, constitutional copies. Mm -hmm. These are military, you know, using gun, and these are using the law. I mean, so 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 there is already we are seeing this camp. I mean, two camps within this within West Africa, you know, one for the the copies, and which the number is increasing. Tomorrow we don't know which country is is, is coming, uh, but it it looks like it's not gonna go over. I mean, <laughs> by the way, in Sierra Leone, they've just oh, yeah, yeah, there, there's, um, yeah. there's conversation around 19 people. So, but then for me, the question is if the idea, the relationship between the military and the civilian was to keep the military in the barracks, mm -hmm. how comes that today we are not able to keep the military in the barracks? Because this has been the conversation yeah. on civil military relations. And, 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 and I think that is largely due to the fact that the civilian authorities are not doing what they're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. They're not holding their part of the social contract that they have with the people. And in that sense, the military will say, okay, if you're not holding your part, why should we hold our part in instead? I mean, let us all compete to who and who gets the power. Yeah. So perhaps this is a more of a commonsensical conversation. But at the end of the day, I mean, I think we need to unpack all these different questions. And that's why I always want to, you know, you, the, the critical question that we were asking about the people. Yeah. If governance is about the people and the people say they want that, but how do we know that? Like, like as I was saying, also, yeah, how do we know that's what the, the people want? Yeah, like last time during the constitutional debate, I was in parliament and everybody was saying, my people, my people. Yeah, I said, yeah. am I not part, am of, I not part of your but people? But they always forget the people. Yeah. And, and, and so for me, I mean, it would be difficult to have a referendum to see whether people want the cool or not. Oh, nice. That wouldn't even make sense. That, <laughs> it wouldn't make sense. Yeah. I mean, but it's the one possibility in yeah. terms of the transition. Mm -hmm. But for me, I feel um, the civilian authorities all over West Africa yeah. need to start thinking, rethinking about their relationship, mm -hmm. that the generation today, they're not generation that waits. These are not generation of yala, yala, yala. You know, people fight. They like, and they have no power. Even, you know, we've seen how, you know, peaceful protesters have brought down certain government. Burkina Faso before yeah. all these things happened. We, we've, we've seen that. In we've the, seen the, Arab, the, the Spring. Arab Spring and how, it, like, so these are the conversation and it is happening in different countries at different levels. Yeah. And so it is part of the social media environment today. And people are seeing what is happening. People are part of the conversation. And we were saying... You don't need to go to school to know what is happening. No. It's audio, WhatsApp, like audio, yeah, yeah. You don't need everybody a, a degree is equal. To get yeah. yeah, everybody is equal. Information, people are getting Everywhere. information, and however you want to get it, and yeah. different information. So for me, at the end of the day, I mean, um, like as I was saying, you know, why would we allow these things to happen? It's the money. That's why I was trying to support your point mm. to say, I mean, why did. Echo was coming into this country was not because they wanted to say, oh, we're going to save Gambia. Mm -hmm. I mean, oh, we're going to put the people. They needed money somewhere also to be able to do that. Well, who, who funded that money at first? Mm -hmm. And, and was today, today the question, the, yeah. the, the reporter, the Al Jazeera reporter was, I mean, constantly raising this question. Um, he, there is no certainty, in fact, um, because they're talking about the standby force. How soon will they intervene? That's one. And where is the money coming from? The and it doesn't even Austria. exist. Trust because me. this echo was people. I mean, like it I, 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 I don't know. Exist. I don't have the records. Yeah. But of course, one of the major problems of echo is that member contributions. <laughs> member yeah. countries do not pay their contributions. But at this this point, no. What, the, at this the point, are interested yes, in, they in are Niger. banking. They you are think banking. They would not support yeah, this. They, yeah. Then if they support that, then the question becomes: Then you know, one, the coupies believe that they are doing this for the people, mm -hmm. and echo is intervening to um, to ensure that there is a moral. Guide, I mean, um, protection <laughs> yeah. to to the secret constitutionalism, basically. Mm. But then you have a task force, like as I was saying. So at the end of the day, it is whose interest. For me, I want, 
I mean, we cannot divorce Africa from the rest of the world. We will continue mm -hmm. to trade. We are influenced. We mm -hmm. do those things. Those things will always continue. continue. But then the second idea, the second generation of Pan-Africanism, what we are talking about is social economic development. Yeah. But now today, if ECOWAS is getting money, because if you're going to work, I mean, your country might get some money. Yeah. I mean, people that are there, you know, there is, there is a need. There is some economy, yeah. I mean, around it. And that's what we need to start avoiding in this continent. Should we go to, to should we go as a country, Gambia? Yesterday, the president, um, they, they launched the, the policy, what do you call the it? Defense the, policy, the defense yes. policy. In six but, I mean, years. I know you are so passionate about the security sector reform, and we still yeah. haven't seen a lot of impact on that. You know, the, even our state house is secured by foreign forces, not Gambians. You know, a lot of people are complaining about the economic forces even in this country right now. Are we in a position to say, yes, we can send government soldiers? I'll come to you, Sam, because I know your opinion about that already. I mean, I saw your, somebody respond to you. We'll come to that. But what do you think, looking at our situation now? Looking at our situation, we need, as I was trying to point to that, but he's the professor, but he will explain <laughs> further, but I'll try to pinpoint. Yeah. Today, Gambia is the president of ECOWAS. Yes, yes. Today, Gambia is the president of ECOWAS. We can say that with yeah. our yeah. Um, so that is that is one role. Yeah. Secondly, we also benefited from a similar intervention. Uh -huh. So we still have economic forces here. Here. Yeah. And when economic was coming here, generally every most Gambians we welcome, welcome that. Yes. And Senegalese. Yes. And yes. So 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 like you see these two. One, mm. we are in charge in mm. addressing. You can take it that way. Yes. Mm -hmm. We are supposed to be the one addressing the situation. Yeah. It's same like in the 1990s when Jawara was the chairman. Uh, was the chair. 1990, so, yeah, was the chairman of ECOWAS. Yeah, so that's why ECOMO, well, you know, even Gambia was part of that. So it's important to have this. I don't know the history. He can tell us the history. Yeah. But at least these two factors is, um, for me, um, we have no excuse to say like we're not, we're not we cannot Morally, be part of that. We Morally, cannot, we cannot be we part cannot. of that. But what I advocate for is not intervention. Mm. What I, I mean, I don't, I don't advocate for military intervention. What I advocate for... Um, is that let them explore or other mechanism where we don't even need to send Troops. one African to the other African countries to Go maintain fight. you know certain things mm -hmm. that we that we don't know. But our situation is very complex. It's, complex. it's not just because we just talk open here and talk, um, but it is something that politicians need to think about. I mean, <clears throat> properly, the president, down foreign ministry, all the way to the national assembly. These are things that they need to debate about. People need to talk about it because at the end of the day. Um, it is the people's decision that should also drive what ECOWAS is going to do at the end of the day. If we, because at the end of, ECOWAS is trying to move from ECOWAS of heads of state, because they are the current one, what they agree, what they are saying, you, usually if you test it back in terms of what the people want, it's totally different. Why is Makisal still doing what he's doing and he's welcome? Uh, you know, arresting and banning political party, that's dictatorship, clearly. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, we cannot, that shouldn't be negotiated because at the end of the day, if we're talking about the region, if we're talking about Africa and democratization, we need to be serious about that. Mm -hmm. So for us within our context, I mean, I think we need to think about it. We need to, to debate, but morally, from a moral standpoint, we benefited financially. We know how it, it helped us. But again, the situation of Gambia and Niger is different. They are, they are different. Yeah, it's different. Here we were talking about democracy. Here we are talking about a military train that wants to fight, fight and maintain itself. Clean the president. If they kill the president, I mean, that's war. That's war. And they openly yeah. said it. So, I mean, it's a threat and all that stuff. But for us, I mean, I think is, I mean, I'm not going to say we go, we don't go, but it's something that we need to think <laughs> Sam, about. You are a military man. You know the situation. <laughs> and you, I saw the national, uh, the political advisor respond to, I think he was responding to you, I don't know, mm -hmm. to say we will go, we should go. Mm -hmm. What is your position? Do you think Gambia is ready to send our men to Niger if, if ECOWAS want to intervene? I would outrightly say no, out of the fact that I don't even know the intelligence yet. Okay. Because if only the intelligence should determine mm -hmm. whether we are ready for it. Okay. Because I, I said it in one of my write-ups that mm -hmm. why I was against even ECOWAS, when we were ECOMOC, when we were going to Liberia, was because for two years, the Gambia army didn't go to the ring to shoot because we didn't have bullets in the army. The businessman, they gave the contract to buy bullets, he didn't deliver. <laughs> and we never did any training. And then the confederation ended at that time, 1989. The morale was bad. Mm -hmm. The army was 
people by the sons of the poor, the destitute, and the insignificant people of the Gambia. Mm -hmm. I wrote it in my book that, you know, um, it was a terrible situation in the camps, but we dared not leave because there are thousands waiting for that bugle to blow and they want to take our places if we leave. Mm -hmm. At least they were feeding hungry mouths that reduce some difficulty in a family. That's how I pro pro projected the pressure in the army that evolved to that explosion in 1994. Mm -hmm. But, you know, to me, I, uh, that is why I said, when it was time to go to Liberia, nobody cared. They said, oh, let them go, let them go. They didn't know that the soldiers were really frustrated. They did not have anything. And they gave them the promise mm -hmm. by the Europeans, mm -hmm. because the Europe, Europe was very interested in stabilizing Liberia. Samuel Doe was a friend of America. Liberia was a base for American uh, surveillance against Libya. And uh, everyone, did, everyone wanted to keep Doe in power, including Jawara, Babangida. He was there for almost over 10 years. So he already had built the relationship they built yeah, together when they network. when they worked together for too long. If you kill, don't worry, you are a part of us. Yeah. So, you know, and that is the reason why the Europeans say, go, go, go. We will fund it, fund it, fund it. How are we going to fund it? We're going to give you $100 a day when you go. The day we were about to enter Liberia, they say, oh, the Gulf War is more important. We are making putting so much money there. Be on your own. Every state pay your own people. I don't know what they were paying the Nigerians, but Gambia was paying $3 a day. That also frustrated everybody. Then our soldiers died. They did not know how to do with them. Everything just fell apart. But that's not even the issue now. It's a different generation. He brought up some interesting situation where he talked about why we do not need foreign forces in, this, in, the, our, our, in Africa. Yeah to be fighting against the Wagner and others. But what perhaps ASA you are missing is the fact that the colonizers brought the occupying forces to protect their colonial interests. Russia never did. Yeah. As a matter of fact, when you heard about Russia in Africa, it was to help the freedom fighters, including even they used to coach Angola, sorry, no, Cuba, to come yeah. and help fight South Africa's apartheid regime. Mm -hmm. I remember um, young Check. Check Joe Biden, yeah, yeah. Joe Biden mm -hmm. you know, attacking George Soros, telling him we are supporting one of the most disastrous and cruel regimes in the world that is occupying a land predominantly occupied, predominantly having black people and then suppressing them and it is fine by us. We are not saying anything about it. It was only the Russians, the Soviet Union, that used to come and help the ANC, the um, Samora Marshall, yeah, um, Guinea-Bissau, you had America Cabral. America Cabral's, to fight against the oppression of these people. All these colonial armies were here to suppress us and pursue the interests of the occupiers and the colonialists. And they continued. And they, could, and they are still here, especially the French. They are still doing the same thing. So when I see the Wagner group comes now, I don't want to say, oh, we have to get rid of all of them. No, because they are the last hope for resistance. <laughs> so it's basically... They are the last hope for resistance. History is repeating Because itself, now, so. what I hear is that when Okomok, when, when, with, with, with the West, with the West building, in fact, you know, uh, pushing this idea of intervention, the Wagner group have dispatched 7,000 combatants to Mali on a standby. I'm sorry they talked to Putin about it. So, you know, yeah, day before yesterday, you heard about the mercenary attack. Yeah. There was an attack in, 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 in Niger. You heard about it. Yes, yes. Dawn. Everybody yes, knows that it was a French orchestrated attack. Even the Americans are saying that they are pointing to are, France. Are we, are, we going to, are we going to see, like, what happened? You said 1990. They said, oh, we're focusing on the Gulf War. It's more important. Are we going to see a replica saying Ukraine war? Really? It's more important. I said it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Ukraine is going to, you know, because they know, they, they know that Africans, well, when it comes to the strike, 
Just give them the order. They will do it. Oh, Ukraine is too important. Okay, let's see how we can cut, cut our budget. It will translate to buying weapons from them and uh, undermining our economy. And that's what happened to the Gambia also. At some point, you know, it was so bad that the $3 a day we are supposed to send the army, we cannot pay it. $3 that is why. That's 1990. That yeah. was a good amount, right? Yeah, $3. $3. And that is why in 1990, <laughs> the soldiers came out in the streets, demonstration with their guns. Everybody thought it was a coup. I was in the army barracks. Permanent secretaries were calling me. Sam, take it easy. Don't worry. We are okay. 1991, the same thing. Although, I later got my intelligence that all the uprisings were planned in, in, in Liberia that they were going to topple the government. The only reason they failed, because the officers who met them and assured them that they were going to lead them, failed to show up the day of the uprising. And I know the names. I don't want to say them here. <laughs> but these are guys who assured them when we go, we'll come there. So they ended up being led by corporals who were easily neutralized, probably out of even the shock that their leaders are gone. And then they failed. But in the process, they brought down Daujai, the first commander of the Gambia National Army, and the second uprising brought down Maba Job, the second commander of the Gambia National Army. And that is what brought Nigerian troops in the country with Dada contracted to come and lead us for two years and stabilize us. That is the, is it the technical... The, the, NATO, NATO, NATO. the NATO. And what happened was, we know the rest of the history, yeah. they came, armed the army, and let them go and took, <laughs> let them overthrow the very government they are supposed to protect because they thought Senegal was our, our threat. So what I am now saying is that it's a complicated thing. Mm -hmm. At this juncture, I swear, if these guys should go on the instruction of the West, which I think they are pushing them into this, they will leave them in the field. They will abandon them in the field and say, Ukraine is taking too much money. We can't put, war is expensive. And we don't know the duration of this war they're going to start in Niger. And who is going to be involved? The enemy you're going to fight matters. Nobody is studying that. With the Wagner group in, pre in, in there, yeah. those guys are ready to die. Yeah. You know, the Wagner fighters, they are seasoned very ferocious in the way they fight. That even blow the minds of special forces. You know, <laughs> even the special forces in Ukraine are saying that these guys are nuts. You kill them from dying and they don't care. But in the process, they kill too. So you don't want to start a fight that will stretch to, and in fact, destabilize the region beyond what Libya has already done. Libya was a mess. We, we, yeah, because, we because, hope we don't get to that. To that, yeah, that level. Yeah. We hope ECOWAS will still. Will let's still, um, let's so. negotiate for a timetable. It's already gone. I uh, think that's another, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's another option. That's another option. Yeah, yeah. Like, okay, we're going to let you go. We know things are bad, but make sure within six months or give us time quick, organize election or else. Don't, don't say or else we're going to come or else the consequence will be dire. And then, you know, you will have a breathing space. They will say ECOWAS, ECOWAS is still on their feet fighting as we are expected. And those guys will know that, yes, and then please turn on the electricity to Niger. It's wrong. The hospitals, people are dying there for no damn reason. You know, just because you want to punish them, nobody does that. You know, they're choking them. You cannot do that. So I think that's the only, my, that's my only recommendation now. Yeah. Let's negotiate for and, a timetable. Well, as a country, we, we are obliged to go, right? If ECOWAS is there, no, we, we are not. No, but then we will have to clear so it with the National, National Assembly, Assembly, you know. Assembly will have to... The National Assembly has to really... Do, well, uh, for me, it that's, that's one of the questions that I want to keep asking. Whether, yeah. you know, I mean, this is a, if we are doing a membership contribution mm -hmm. to ECOWAS or UN, you know, do we have to do that? I, I mean, I'm not sure. Yeah, war is too much. War is beyond only contribution. Even America. Yeah. You got to go to, to, to Congress uh, to get Congress. approval yeah. for war, yeah. regardless of everything they pump into the well, you army. Know, you know, you, you could say intervention. intervention. You could say you they things. could argue that it's intervention. Yeah. Even though so, the Constitution is clear, Section 1884, um, it has to go to Parliament and all that. Don't that's... sugarcoat it. Yes, uh, well, this is not going to well, be intervention. Well, this is war. <laughs> it might <laughs> war. Like, it wouldn't be war, but it's intervention now. We wouldn't call because it war now. This is like crossing. <laughs> intervention for what? For war. 
It's yeah. not intervention. Intervention, there are two Somebody things. Somebody who's telling peace you fight you peace and the, intervention, the intervention could be two things here. Mm. For me, it's either, you because what I call was once is to restore. And that is why people ask this question. Whose interest here? If you talk about the people, like you said, the people are celebrating. They want the coup. Yeah. Why can't you go with them? But like I said, there are others who do not welcome the coup. That's the true. The president's party yeah. is already um, you know, making a statement that... Um, the family, you know, is suffering and all that. So, but then um, it comes to this point now, the intervention. <coughs> Do you want to intervene to restore the Usted president? Or you want to intervene to make sure that they are, the, the military return the country to civilian rule? Yeah. How can here. you do that? No, no, what I'm, what I'm saying, mm. what I'm saying, the intervention here is not only military intervention. Mm -hmm. yeah. It could be diplomatic intervention. Okay. And if you're going for diplomatic military intervention, because for me, Diplomatic intervention will not, will not, is highly unlikely, highly unlikely to restore the Ustad president to power. That's correct. It's only military intervention that could do that. Okay. But when you go for diplomatic intervention, it could result to or result in the military returning the country to civilian rule. Exactly. That is highly unlikely also to restore the Ustad president to power. Yeah. So ECOWAS have two options on the table here. That are we going to intervene? Just to make sure, because we, they just, it seems like they just want to see the Ustad president back to power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they, that's, yeah, that's, that's the, all the interest now. That's the yeah, but that's the interest. Yeah, he's because the he's a French boy. He's, he's a French boy. Elected. Or are they interested the in making yeah. sure that the military leaves power and then return the country to civilian rule? Because yeah. there are two things here. And I think um, both of you will now agree. You're sounding like this basketball. Two things in one. <laughs> <laughs> two things here. <laughs> You know, um, the reason why ECOWAS, the leadership of ECOWAS, is also very much worried and concerned about the situation in the United States, that um, within a period of three years or four years, we have had coup in Mali, we have had coup in Guinea, we have had coup in Burkina Faso. Mm -hmm. Was it Mali or Guinea that had coup? Mm -hmm. I think it was Mali. Uh, yeah, Mali. Mali came and then he yeah, Mali, yeah. Mm -hmm. we had Burkina Faso. And now we are talking about Niger. Okay, equal spread. So, and the leadership Sudan. are saying, yeah. because if you look at that region, if you look yeah. at the map, okay, from Eastern Africa, Sudan is unstable. Then bordered with Chad, Chad, Chad is unstable. Chad yeah. is bordered unstable. with Niger, Niger is unstable. Bordered with Burkina Faso, Burkina Faso Mali. is unstable. Sorry, Mali. Mali is unstable. Burkina, Burkina Faso yeah. there. Nigeria dealing with Boko Haram, the northeastern part. Mm -hmm. And then you're talking about Guinea as well. That could destabilize the Sahel region. The Sahel region, as a result of violent extremism, is unstable right now. Yeah. And that could affect the entire West Africa sub-region. But at some point, the leaders also, today, I'm sure when they start, they will see, be like, okay, you know what? It might be our country next. Mm -hmm. Okay? The Gambian leader might be like, hmm, I have to take care. In Sierra Leone, they'll be like, hmm, I have to take Like Ivory Coast, the same. So they're yes. always thinking that yeah. if we don't address this collectively, if we don't take a decisive action in Niger, it could be us. We could be victims. But also, the leadership, um, and, and they will be thinking like the, the president has, we have to set an example to Niger so that we scared all those other countries. The, the military will not think of intervening because they will know that if they intervene, we are coming after them. But also the military leaders there, the reason why they are resisting is that, and the reason why they're getting support from Mali, Guinea, um, Burkina Faso is that, those people are also very much aware that if ever was to intervene and succeed in Niger, mm -hmm. they are coming after coming us. After you us. see, the professor is breaking down everything. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so at some point, both camps, I, would, I don't want to call it camps, but yeah. both sides trying to, or parties trying to, uh, because for me, the conflict, this situation is no more between um, Baz Bazoum and the military leadership. For me, it's between the military leadership and ECOWAS now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. These are the two parties now. Yeah. Okay, and, and that's why it's difficult for even ECOWAS to play the role of, in, I mean, um, even diplomatic intervention now, negotiation. Because, because they already, have, they have it's just like what happened even in the Gambia 2016, even though a lot of us supported it. But at some point, ECOWAS came and said, you know what? You must hand over power. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the situation of the Gambia, just like Honorable Salah was saying the other time on COVID time, there were two legitimacies here. Mm -hmm. Constitutional legitimacy and electoral legitimacy. Jambi had the constitutional legitimacy because he was still president up to the 19th of January. That's correct. And Barrow had the electoral legitimacy because he won elections and yep. waiting yep. for the 19th to be sworn in. Mm -hmm. But Ecowas came and said, you know what? You have to step down at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. But because... Jambi had, had also the constitutional right to challenge. But we know very well that the situations were different because um, everybody knew that well, Jambi was arguing. His arguments were just flawed. They were just weak, in my opinion. 
and he could not be in power after 19. He was going to be declared rebel. But the situation in Niger is different. You have the military seize power now. And what we saw today is that they have now announced their cabinet. Yeah, 21 members in cabinet. Well entrenched. And they, so they, they're insisting at some point, ECOWAS will find it difficult to play that role of negotiation now because already they have, they've made their position clear that they want the military to go. But I don't think all hopes are lost. I want to believe that still um, ECOWAS could just go back and start thinking of how do we intervene peacefully to make sure that at least we have a timeline. Because for me, in my opinion, the military should not continue in Niger. They have to go at some point. Mm -hmm. Whether it's going to be six months, whether it's going to be three months, whether yes. it's going to be one year, but yes. they have to go. Because they will go. We, we have to also get rid of this they military intervention, go. military intervention coups mm. are not the solution. That is going to be stabilized. Okay. In, in order to stop military coups and intervention coup d'etat in Africa, I think we also have to look at what is causing some yeah. of these coups yeah, we, we've talked about corruption. Mm -hmm. Right now, let's look at the situation in Senegal. Today, God forbid, if the military should intervene in Senegal, you will see reason why they should. Highly unlikely because the French are present there. No, I'm saying no? Highly... I'm saying the French are present there. Highly unlikely. Very, 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 but very, very. It's not in but the it doesn't matter, you know. It's it doesn't matter, you know. Of Senegal, but yeah. if they have to, you would see reason why. Because look at what is happening in Senegal. Yeah, is... With all these yeah. things happening, I have never seen, I know in my time, I've never had where the president just can wake up and ban a political party mm -hmm. the same day, jail a political opposition leader, and do all of these things that they're doing to the opposition the same time. And ECOWAS or any regional mm -hmm. body, nobody, when you say something, they say, oh, it's internal matter. Mm -hmm. But when he said he was not going to run for a third term, everyone was killing him. Including UDP, and I keep telling them, I don't know, I don't know where they took that statement from. That is wrong and wrong and wrong. Today in Senegal, they banned the past safe party, and they quiet. Mm -hmm. But if it happens to them here, they will, you know, they will um, expect other people yeah. to speak. It's a, it's a, it's that is my mean. problem with people, opposition parties, and other people. Now, what is happening in Senegal right now? All of this situation that is happening in Senegal, nobody is saying anything. It's but if something happens, really frightening. They will say, oh. They will say the military should go back to, to, to the camp. But they are not saying people are dying. How many people no, no, are dying? Before you get to the military, when when civilians will come out to protest and violently, they will make a statement. Yeah. I mean, stop the violence. Let's go. Peace mm -hmm. is important and all that. <laughs> yeah. So it's important that you address it. And then, and, and Fatou, just to say this quickly, ECOWAS has this, said you are aware of that, the early warning system. Yes. We yes, worked yes. in that early warning yeah. system, um, you know, being conflict monitors reporting. And to echo us on you know security related threats and governance related issues in the country. These early ones, all these are early one signs that look, you have to be decisive, you have to do something about this situation before it could turn into something yeah, else. Yeah. So the early warnings are always there. Like what is even happening in Senegal, Usman Sonko's health situation right now. The the the, Papa Alinyang, of the politicians Papa that are Alinyang, in jail, yeah, the Papali situation, all those things are early. And what signs. is happening in Kasamas to people yeah, are yeah, talking all those, about all those things are early The day they control is, us, is, is, is what helps their economies work for them. Because the way they control the economy, like look, look at it from this angle. <laughs> Every resource yeah. that these former French mm. colonies had, mm. had to be surrendered to France or anything you have to deal with them, France has to give you the blessing. Mm. Those things, you got to deposit I, I understand it used to be 86% of your foreign exchange 
to the Central Bank of France, now mm. it's about 56, I think, 50, mm. something like 56. Well, when you need it, you write and apply and we see whether we sh should give you the money to go and do it. Is it different from the way we cannot have still have echo? The echo currency? That's true. Because <laughs> the France CFR, they don't want to get rid of it. Because when <laughs> they do, they're going to lose it. That is, when, that is why when Secretary tried it, they went to Guinea Conakry. Not only did they destroy every school, every hospital, everything they built, but even the sewage system, they poured concrete in the civil system to set an example to other countries that may try to um, copy what Secretary did. And Secretary said, I'm not going to take the France CFR, I'm going to take the National Silly. They used to call it the Silly. Mm. And what happened? It started picking up, gaining traction. All of a sudden, they flooded Guinea with false city, counterfeit cities from Europe. And the economy collapsed. But Secretary continued saying, Whatever it is, I'm never, never going to let you in. Well, well, the, 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 the Soviets supported him. Remember when he said, well, I prefer um, freedom in poverty than slavery. In, yes, yes. In the Soviets helped the him. Soviets for, uh, they, they, they protected because him. Because the for, French turned their for, back. For, 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 sec for security, of course. But also the Soviets at that time were not as saintly as expected. They were exploitative. Yeah. And at some point, Secretary was even angry with them. They were really exploiting the resources of Guinea for the, for, for the Soviet Union, just like the Europeans were doing, although they protected him because they knew that, Secretary knew that if the Soviets had walked out, they're going to kill him. I went to Guinea and I saw these artilleries. You know, it was literally intercontinental artilleries, you know, all being in Senegal. Because everybody told Senegal and Guinea was going to go. They were like uh, militarized, fully militarized. But the Soviets supplied them with all those weapons at that time. And that is what saved Guinea from invasion from Senegal. Otherwise, the Frank would have helped Senegal and invaded Guinea at that time. Yeah, so that's what the situation is. But I think left to me alone, Esa said, I will go and negotiate for timetable for these guys to leave. Everybody save face. Where is, where is Jonathan in all this? Because Jonathan seems to be the one who is always leading these negotiations. Oh, yeah. good luck. Yes, he, he should be. No, this is, this is a like this no, Jonathan, Jonathan leads when it comes to us. Constitution. Constitution. <laughs> <laughs> but this is military. So military yeah, I, have, Abu Bakar. Abu, Abu Bakar. Abu Bakar. Yeah. So Abdul Salam. Yeah. Yeah. But, but for, me, for me, I think, you know, I mean, I was part of um, a technical working group. We were supposed to review the, the ECOWAS protocol. I think it was 2001, before they had a meeting and then they confirmed yeah, it on the issue of time limits. Yeah. Um, you know, we met in Ghana. Two days, debate among ourselves, argue, you know, push, fight. And then this thing went all the way to ECOWAS and then it was, it was cancelled. So you see people, I mean, meeting, discussing, setting standards for the, for the institution, for everybody. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, the problem with ECOWAS is also the, the way it is constituted. And then this is the problem where you have only leadership. If president here in this country, everybody keep asking me. The other time I was in the, um, the, the European Studies Conference and I was presenting on our paper on ECOWAS, uh, you know, I mean, ECOWAS intervention, you know, uh, whether it's an occupying force, uh, siding with the people or an occupying force. And people ask me, what is ECOMIC still doing in Gambia? And I keep saying, well, we don't know. I mean, but the leadership know. And how comes, if you ask people here, with the surveys, people want economic to leave. But each year, we keep saying that they've been retained. Yeah. So, so there's a disconnect between what the people want and what the leadership is also seeing. Of course, we don't have all the information. They have all the information. But at the end of the day, how do you reconcile the desire and aspiration of the people and that of the political leadership? For me, I always say, Politics should be about making the people happy, especially if you want to be re-elected. Do the right thing. People will appreciate it. You grow and then, you know, you get re-elected. You move on. All your party and everything go on. But if you want to affect the lives of the people, people will also fight back. And they will always want to, um, you know, ensure that their freedom and liberty continue. You so, want to know my opinion hmm? about economic in this country? No, I, 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 you, you this, can... this will stay as long as <laughs> Baro is in power. Why? As long as Barrow is in power, yes. I say here for Barrow. Um, the yeah. government of Barrow uh -huh. is a major factor in bringing them here, bringing economic here, mm -hmm. and also for this duration, 
that borough is in power, they, their presence really helped stabilize the country. Trust me, I'm telling you what happened to Sadao da Jawara. Sadao da Jawara. Is it not a government's failure mm? that we are not able to reform our army in six years to be able to rely on them? Yeah, because you know what? Because also, Sam, you talked about 1994 because the army was demoralized, yes. right? Yes. And that led to the 1994 coup. Yes. At this point, you know, a lot of people, you talk to army officers, they tell you, you know, it, it's so difficult that they, they don't even have access to to the presidency and all that because you know it's kind of you know in in any sector in any way you walk mm -hmm. people want to be the one seen around the the, 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 the principles and all this right mm -hmm. now yeah, it's the, somehow uh, you know, it's, feelings. Thing, right if the army cannot have access to that you know you know oh. they don't have access to any of those they don't have access to major intelligence the economic and all this stuff so you don't think that demoralizes them that cannot that could not that could that not, not be a cause for another thing that we had we okay all let, let me get in there yeah. in 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 between 1981 and 1989 uh -huh. we had massive senegalese military presence in this country after the coup d'etat we all love it in the army why because we work with them and because the Europeans were funding it, we had a quota in that arrangement where we rotate our forces, join the confederation and enjoy the luxuries and the benefits like the Senegalese. I have recommended this over and over and over to the government. Now. That's what I'm saying. I have said that, look, to stop this demoralization factor that people are talking about, yeah. let's revisit the confederal protocol. The confederal protocol could have been brought back and have, instead of you have 1,000 Senegalese coming in, you have 700 and 300 to the army and we rotate them. Everybody will look forward to the three, to the, to the, to the, to the time he's going to spend there. Because like I always, I explain it in my book, that in the Gambia army at that time, I was a second lieutenant I was receiving 1,200. When I went to the Confederation, I was paid $5,000. That was huge. The soldiers who were receiving $350 were receiving the salary of a lieutenant, 1,200 and above. So the, the best way, the, 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 the most effective way of disciplining soldiers at that time was if you, go, if you show too much indiscipline, you will not go Confederation. Everybody was disciplined because everybody looked forward to this. So that's, when, that's how to keep the military in the barracks, yes. where, yeah. the, where their interest is. Yes. Nobody will. But why? Why is it that Jame really escaped this mess? It's because when Jame came, he did what we recommended to Jawara, and he refused to do it. And that was to involve Gambia Army in international peacekeeping. Mm. We recommended that I wrote a paper about it. Chongan is my witness telling them that, let's go into international. And they said, you guys cannot even organize a good parade. You're talking about international <laughs> uh, international peacekeeping. But that is what stabilized Jame. Yeah, that, Until Jame left, they were going to Darfur and coming. Nobody is interested in coup. Yeah. All you wanted is to go to Darfur and come back. Yeah. If we had that package within this economic arrangement, no soldier will think about, oh, these guys are here stealing our resources. We're marginalizing us. They will say, I will have a turn, I will go there because the Europeans are paying them. And a lot of money. Senegal is seeing it as a breeding peacekeeping a keep, a mission because peacekeeping is being right off. Yeah. You know, like, um, what's the name? Um, Darfur is no more. But Central but, but, African but Republic. Is stabilize, stabilize, you said stabilizing mission, right? Yes, stabilizing mission, just like the is it confederal. Is it, you said they have stabilized. They have contributed since the arrival yeah, of the Yeah, just, just, like, the, really just like the Confederation Army which was all Senegalese, was a stabilizing force. Have they stabilized the country? Since At that time? Economic, economic, I mean, economic on the bar. Right now, have they stabilized? Yeah, I mean, like, um, to some extent, I don't even want to go there. <laughs> no, but you <laughs> said no, they should they stay in the country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have but what I'm trying to power. say is, I still want to give the chance to the possibility of the government looking into my suggestion, recommend my recommendation of trying to involve the Gambia army armed forces in this foreign stabilizing well, force. Mr. Mr. Sir, I think there is a contradiction here. Why? You said, your opinion is, 
let the economic forces be here as long as Baro is in power. Yes. That means even if Baro is here up to 2036, economic forces will be in the country. I think now, it's an I, integral part of it. No, 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 what I'm saying is, and now if you are telling me, if you are telling me that you want to recommend to the government, I think what you should say is that, mm -hmm. well, I will, if the government fail to re implement what I would recommend to them, yes. then economics should be here. They, su be they shouldn't be here. Because, no, no, you know, because, because if you recommend, yes. if you recommend and the government is able to do that, yes. then we wouldn't need economic forces here, according to your explanation. No, no, no. no. What you, you, you recommended to Jame, Jame did that. Yes. That's what you said. No, no, no. No, no, no. No, no, no. No, no, no. That was Jame. No, they did it. Jame did it after we came to power. Mm -hmm. But that was a recommendation we gave to Jawara and they rejected it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but, but what, what I'm trying to say is, with the economic saying? now, with mm -hmm. the economic now, mm -hmm. well, I'm, I'm talking about the economic, just like the Confederation was funded by the Europeans. Mm -hmm. Everything, our equipment, our payments, our, you know, our, our everything. Mm -hmm. More or less, that's what is happening here. This the Europeans, European Union, it's that good. is funding I economic know, in know. this country. Yeah. And these people are using it to really you know, build their armies, give them what they need, you know. So I am saying that why don't we just do the same arrangement like we did with the Confederation forces? You know, you know, can I, can I say something? at some point? Should they leave at some point? No, no, can I, I say mean? something? Take over. Take uh, over. Sorry. Should they leave at some point? Of course. They should. Yeah, but yeah, but they, they should. They should. They should. They should leave at some point. No, they, they, it's going to be very I'm difficult. I'm I'm I will not. I will not recommend them to leave. You know when Barrow is in power. Why? Seriously. You don't trust that Barrow can. Yeah, because, reform our because army? Yeah, yeah. Don't you trust that Barrow can reform? <laughs> yes, our army? Barrow is telling us that no. they are trying to stabilize. Don't the you trust that Barrow can reform our army? No, I because mean, the reformation of the army has yes. stretched beyond my imagination. In that, day one, it was going to be security sector reform. Yeah. But it was predicated on the wrong yeah. assessment. That you know, like the army is polluted, is nonsensical. Pro promotions were bad. Generals were yes. But that, that was a fact. That yes, but a... then <clears throat> it never changed. The very issues that you attack Jame for mm -hmm. promoting generals and so on. This government did that also. They promoted generals from captains to generals, gave the lieutenants. You know, which there are international standards before you give a general's rank to a soldier. But we violate them. But also, we can say that we have our own standards. Governments do that. But what, that is why the security sector reform is very difficult to achieve. Because yes. to, you're going to bust the whole command from top to bottom if you want to do no, it. No, no. So, so there's, there are different ways to reform. So there's mm -hmm. a neoliberal one that talks about the numbers cutting down because currently the mm -hmm. security forces, we're talking about, if you combine our security forces, we're talking about seven, eighteen thousand. 18,000. Mm -hmm. And that is like about 40% of the wage budget. Mm -hmm. And, you know, with 40% of the wage budget, we are saying that it might not be able to get in, into healthcare, education, the elements of human security, basically. Mm -hmm. So that's why they've been that conversation and that's why the issue of right sizing and downsizing right. was. I mean, but then for me, I think there was there, there was lack of clarity in in that. I was part I, of the, I was going to ask you that question. What's going to be the criteria no, of, no. The, of <clears throat> downsizing and right sizing yeah, the elements who are in the forces when promotions were not both based on capability but first come first so off. so my first this it has always been like that you know for me like as i will know my position has always been like they say i'm a pro military yeah. um, <laughs> you know person sort of but the, the idea is the fact that, you know, sometimes people forget the history of our military, yeah. you know, and that's why I say, like, you are here, you know, we had a very young military, you know, comparing to, to, to many. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I'm also happy that you mentioned the, the role of peacekeeping in maintaining and professionalizing the military. Stabilizing yeah, the military. Yeah, stabilizing, but it's also critical. And that's why now, when there is no peacekeeping, I'm also rethinking about your proposal, because it sound it could be more like a local peacekeeping that's what we did during the yeah, confederation the, that that can work but then the, was, for me mm -hmm. the idea is if any country mm -hmm. if this is, i mean this is the way i see things mm -hmm. i mean if gambia has a problem today yeah it should be gambia's responsibility to, to do their utmost best to yeah. stop that mm -hmm. where we fail then we we'll ask for help yeah. mm -hmm. but today in this context what we look is like okay it favors me it doesn't favor anybody we don't think about whether it favors the country and then we just we just focus on that you know but, you know in my book i made a recommendation and i said this could have been a stabilizing 
a stabilizing arrangement post-colonial days. And that was to form a West African military force, just like NATO. We had NATO after the Second World War, where in fact countries that are very related and close to each other mm -hmm. will form forces that will be, be interdeployed and rotated, you know, for emergency. In that case, it will prevent coup d'etat. But, hey, I mean, but, I, but, so, but that was before I really me, factored French control of the. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know. No, I think the more for more. I'm with constitution. Wow, why? I'm in constitution. I'm in constitution. I'm in time limit. Time limit. Wow. 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 <laughs> why did it have that? Lonely of Lonely of Sam? No, why did it? I have Faru. This is not a very economic. I think that what, what we need, Madame Boga Gambe, you need to look at the broader picture. Wow. Well, you need to look at the broader picture because, you know, Munga Watami, the idea of peacekeeping. So, you know, we have been going everywhere and we have we are getting A. Mother Sunyan and Niti Wahen and Yunsun military is not professional arguing. You know. How comes that we have been able to do this and then we're getting the recommendation? Yeah, after. They, they, they well, in peacekeeping. Yeah. Why in peacekeeping? Well, in peacekeeping, well, peace well, peace 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 we are the best yes. when it comes to peace. If you're talking about peace in this country, Fognani, we could have worked together and justify it to even those who are bankrolling us. But if we are keeping peace in other people's country, no, how mean, can we not keep it in our own country? We are not in war right now. No, no. Hang on. You know, 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 you But then the issues more, the issue more come for Gambia. I think the key proposal is that you know, you know, in especially right now, when you get talk about an exit strategy, we are talking about all that. It can work in a in a sense. I mean, the the motivation because right now, right now, people are not moving out. But but I have seen the peacekeeping has been one of the most important elements. You have has kept our military in 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 check. But beyond that, also there is also opportunities for training, capacity building. They soon military is you know way more professional than they were in last time. Boba in his article, I was trying to you know, make that counter argument yeah. that today, you know, of course, uh, there are still challenges, but we have more people that are well educated today. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, compared to to, uh, to, yeah. to 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 the previous in terms of professional exposure, they are more, you know, professionally exposed yeah. than they were before. You know, we have colleagues that were at the university now they enjoy. For me, those are the people that, you know, today, if they tomorrow they want to jump up and say something like they want to seize power or do something, you think like I'm going to allow that to happen? Why? Because at mm. the end of the day, as citizens, the best way to maintain our stability and all that is for all of us to understand what our constitution is, what our constitution means for us, yeah. what our laws are, things that are non-negotiable. Mm -hmm. And that is the basic. No matter who is there, who wants to do it, no matter how our frustration, yeah. we need to focus on those elements and see that these ones, we can divide ourselves, we can fight over you know, who supports what whatever party, yeah. but our constitution, our democracy, it's the it's things supreme. that hold us together, it's untouchable, mm -hmm. and people should not touch that. Yeah. Yeah. And whoever tried to do that, I mean, that's the, the, the this people. This is the constitutional convergence we're yeah. talking about. That is needed yeah, exactly. the Ecuador subject. Exactly. But it is the people. For me, at the end of the day, leaders will be leaders. The leaders come from us. Tomorrow, you will talk with American more yeah. in yeah. Leaders come from us. They're part of us. And if they want to do things, you have never affect the rest of us. What we need to do is to stop that. Well, and this is what Africans are not. Security. That's what we're not doing. Oh. <laughs> See, you know, that's what we're not doing. I man, man, I am, man, I am pro people-centered things. You have the people be you know what I decide you know. Yeah. And man, I don't. When people say Nelly Buga. But usually I, I can disagree with that, but I don't have choice. Yeah. As for me as a leader, I will try to convince them, not say, well, this is not a good way. Yeah. But then I will not just say, this is what I want, so let's do let's with do what that. we want. Yeah. And the problem we have within West Africa is we connect the one, you go tenka. Mwene, then I'm selfish leadership. Yep. They don't care about their people, they don't care about the constitution, they don't care about anything. Yeah. And at the end of the day, these are the very people you have know, when they're in peace. They are the ones that are trying to solve certain issues. But in their own countries, they are killing their people. They are denying them what they are supposed to do. Yet people you get up for, and yet you want to change the situation. Yeah. As long as economic conditions be continue fee. Exploitation bank fee, mm -hmm. affair kureta, mm -hmm. political disturbance, everything will be because niti yebni ko hole mo resource con living la competition. Kunekangi buga grab at the end of the day. But what is, where is the future generation? 
Then you never get come and say the So if there is chaos feeling, yeah, how are we going to think about it that tomorrow? I always hated kudetas. Yeah? I always hated no, kudetas. No, no, no. So I was the one who was most. You get a new generation of. Africans, yeah. the rebelliousness. Why? Because well, they are dissatisfied with the they way democracy the works, way so they look for other options. Among your mind, post Cold War, yeah. is yeah. democratization, civil society um, waking up, and then disengagement strategy from the state, um, forming informal economies and all that, you know, trying to disobey the state. You know, that, that, that kind yeah. of um, you know, rejuvenated citizenry that we had. During the post Cold War era, I mean, as, as a matter of fact, I, 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 wrote, I, I, I wrote a resistance. Nisu so ne so pushi nisu mara at some point. I mean, politics I, I, is about power competition. Who can more ambandole akio ino? Why maluma wa money kene? If the country agrees, then this is the way. Yeah. Then nilenko wada defe. Nobody else. So talk that. Nobody else has the right. But for the Kenyan water, Allah lo lo no no money kapa. You know. Well, because sometimes you know you have to push. Sometimes need to know what about. President, you know who they have. Can you know like Ekowas? Like you know, like you know, all Ekowas is about. You know, they they have their own interest. They have a group of people. We have to protect our member state members and most. Unless unless from Mandal. our side here, Mandal. you know when they leg it is our outlook towards Ekowas. The little more than that. Why you know? You know, this is the other problem. The late vice president was talking about our foreign policy. Foreign policy. But right now, tell the foreign. You hanga mangewa afiri the moral dilemma bo Gambia neka right now. He was very clear. No country will you, no, you will allow any country to be used as a launch pad. Well, I mean, man, 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 the monuma panel, but then the, 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 so, I mean, this is not a deca. I agree the consequence of war can hamuko. Trauma being am yundum barracks because you get Liberia peacekeeping wreck. Lulu so to do a war could delus if you don't have a what they are saying in Ukraine. Moi, the soldiers who are coming from the battlefield and very violent because of PTSD, post-traumatic um, disorder, yeah, yeah, syndrome disorder, yeah. disorder syndrome, yeah. because you get know the violent in family, you know the door sent, you know the race sent, you know the soldiers who are in war field, because of war, the fire, yeah. all that, yeah. so thinking. Been you get Iraq at one point in the US. Every day, 22 Marines will commit suicide. Suicide, yeah. 22 for a long time. So if you send soldiers there to fight and combat, okay, how much we are prepared for managing? <laughs> well, the infrastructure. Yeah, yeah. 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 You, yep, you yeah, have to. That is why, if you don't factor those things, society, yeah. then I get the man merge game. But do I give you Well, I never fake much ball. Fake much ball. But the but the thing for Gambia, what I'm aware of, ne, nyun 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 tei, then you get moral dilemma. Nyun then. Bena nyun benefit na isi ekwas. Nyun munda nyun jeh excuse. Nyun then to. Nyun right now nyun say nyun get am I peace keep us free. Thank you. Pare gu. Pare gu. No la wasa chisma people be. We are on SSR. Pare gu. Sun pare gu na nyun dem gu. Mane, Botoga will boil and cost of Lavon. Guy, you know, so legging you and I hear you know what I'm fitting. I felt Mane the Halen then said for Hebe Mucha. Well, no, Mona Mucha, that Monica bring you over. Well, I'm going to be a Gambian Labia. Huh? Mane so smoky, say Mr. Turedi, stay me the Ecoas, let my teacher go. Take his now or a man, chain you and kiss in Boca. Why, why, I'm not advantage now. You know, advantage Mugambi and Ben, and you I don't feel that we are threat to many people or anybody. Mm -hmm. I mean, except uh, New Honey, we are security threat, Senegal. Because yeah. for me, Makisa's statement was basically that you know, going to support, I mean, rebels. And I think that needed to be clarified. No, that was not clarified. Yeah, so for me, I think that that was the. Yeah, or unless it is true. I'm so, I'm sorry it, if it were Jamie, yeah. he would have responded. Jamie would have responded. Responded. But, but he would not say that in the present, in well, defense of Jamie. But unless. Yet, I mean, Munga clarified, Loham, the Walanga Bible, and I'm going to take a digger and I'm back on Roma. But then the issue, Lumane Kadi Wamwene, I mean, come for our context. I mean, you know, we need to look at that. And how we do it, that there are lessons that we need to learn. But for the Gambit, I mean, do they learn lessons from the experiences person. you have in the Defnoko? You young were feeling the Confederate protocol. But before that, you know, we are talking about the um, Nakalawasa. 
the 1990 uh, economic, mm -hmm. you know, how Jawara was the chair. Mm -hmm. There was a very important role Bo Hamna Jawara played yeah. when Lolo happened and the idea of collective security. So there are things you have to say learn as a country, you say, even help. 2016, of yeah. course, that's dis different, but it's very similar. In a way, I'm um, not going to say that. Lolo Hamna Gambia could share that in terms of these discussions, but especially where a situation Bo Hamna local people then they were engaged for. You know, local leaders were, come Halifa, you know, you were talking about his interview. They were ready. They know what they wanted. Yeah. You know, but then Philly, maybe there is also a division. They don't know what they want. Money. So at some point, Lul, there has to be, has Halifa to be there. Why Halifa can get me connected to the And you can see the affair of the Tell even this Senegalese situation, how Halifa is addressing it. Understand? Because don't go whole as a boba. And bim je ka hewe dafa ne Gambia dafa am a part to play in this. We have learned. We have learned. Munen munen yon munen yon lead a delegation go hamne munen yon mediate. That was but I wrote that I wrote that before. I yeah. wrote that first. But my, I was the first. Uh, I wrote that many you know and like baro. But I'm going to use this whole thing. So I'm going to say, you never know your foreign policy. I'm going to say, Morocco, Morocco, I didn't intervene. You know, I was because I, I had it. Many Gambia, then you were on a try. But then, but, but Gambia would not be able to do that because already this weekend, I'm going to say, you get a broader whole thing. I'm going to say, you know, 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 but beyond that, speaking of Nekut politics, there are religious leaders again in your hand that you could use. What are they? They're using they're using this sultan from yeah. you know Purmur Duga because Ekwas time we have been pushing that. Mm -hmm. When you use traditional mechanism. But yeah. what is happening in Senegal, fear out, you cannot ban political really, when the change came, they were trying to do an APRC. Well then if you ban a political party, you are creating more problems for yourself. Problems, I know. Yeah, so sometimes yeah, they like want to ban the APRC. APRC. Bring in Kodan, why gisnga? Settle nun ko manage APRC mungi exist nyu dem nyu sita. Anagai gange device and boban dan kandang. Wow. So sometimes they you let the people younger. so like so some people you just let them be I, I and not even come. We ban political parties. Did, 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 did. And today nyu gambe fi ken gere nyu democratic so sabre jame muna tau ma walu. I'm not in problems you have the mungi but still we are doing very well in terms of we are doing tremendously good. And there there are lessons you have that we can sell the sabre jame. I think I remember Dabo in one of the interviews when you said you should not ban just allow them to die natural death. So if you in Senegal, if you don't want Pastef to grow, let people not vote for well, Pastef. Party okay. Pastef support is a threat. And Halifa was Real talking about threat. Pastef being a, be a national party. Yeah. Mm. You see, in a political party, if you don't want to you know, because they don't have the national framework. Yes. They don't. You know, if you don't want to them send you on. But who have they came out that in the presidential, presidential election? Yeah. They have now sit in the national assembly. And, Are you banning them from the assembly again? Majority 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 the majority 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 So you're creating more problems for yourself. Majority and then next minute, I mean, you know, but for us, we need to be concerned about that. We are not. You know, we need to be we concerned. We're just calling Baro President Makisa well, Even when he says, you know, or whatever. No, he's out. <laughs> yo, yo, if you have the history, la am yeah, hey, professor. But, 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 um, we don't need war um, in, in our sub-region. Um, really, I think we have better things to do. Um, today in the Gambia, you go to certain communities in this country, even in urban Gambia, talk about Bundung, people are without water, yeah. water, even water to drink. I mean, this 21st century, um, mm -hmm. electricity problem, our healthcare, our education, our road infrastructure, um, unemployment among young people, the back way, I mean, migrants, returnees, all these are challenges that we are facing in the sub-region. I think ECOWAS leadership um, and the individual leaders of these countries need to focus more on how to address these problems. When it comes to military intervention, like I said, and I would repeat it, for me, it's not the solution. Um, coup is not the solution. Coup will not necessarily solve the problem because we have seen it time and again repeatedly. Uh, military leaders will come and then they will not solve the problem um, they claim were existing in the, in, the, in the previous government. So really what we need is um, still power to the people. And when we say the people now, Elections like him, then them sani kafa. Whoever we elect um, continues until the time comes that we want. We can be frustrated sometimes. You know there are challenges. Everybody will feel like this one needs to go. But we use um, the peaceful means. We use democratic means to um, mm. to replace governments. I think that's what, that is what I will call for. Um, so I will say no to military intervention. But at some point also, ECOWAS needs to put itself in order 
and um, they are the leadership of ECOWAS, they are, you know, presidents and whatever you call them, they should really look into, I mean, the way they're running the affairs of this country. They should be but bold they, enough to be talking yeah, to each other, to be talking to each yeah, other telling, uh, hey, look, order. you, 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 they got, you are stepping here. Yeah, that's um, true. And it's good because at the end of the day, it's geopolitics. It's not only about what is happening in Senegal that it will not affect Senegal, like what we are saying. Um, but we could use that as an opportunity to, inter to intervene in the Senegalese situation. But then, because of course, you'll say, so holy 2016, we had our problem here. Senegal took the uh, lead. They took the because lead. Because they knew that they, they, if Gambia was destabilized, Senegal yeah. will be destabilized. Yeah. So today, you know, we could also say, okay, if Senegal is destabilized, we'll destabilize. If Niger is destabilized, Nigeria will be destabilized. If uh, Mali is destabilized, Mauritania will be affected as well. So ECOWAS leaders, if you and Bopan, they should be bold enough to talk to each other and let them also respect the constitution. You try new issue the issue of time limit. I know, I remember Gambia and Togo used to be the, the, the stumbling yeah. block mm -hmm. to that idea. But now they should be able to have that. They should be, if they are saying um, coup d'etat is un, un, I mean, un, unthinkable in the 21st century, mm -hmm. it shouldn't be done, it's not fashionable, then, you know, countries' constitutions without term limits is also unprecedented. In the mm -hmm. 21st century, mm -hmm. you cannot be here without even having term limits in constitution. Mm -hmm. So, in as much as you condemn military coups, we should also condemn um, countries, I mean, self leaders, you know, self-perpetuating in power, leaders staying in the forever. constitution to favor them and all that. Loan is something mm -hmm. that we need to address. I am still saying that ECOWAS will um, explore um, peaceful means of resolving the conflict in Niger. Yes, I said. Wow, I mean, part of, for the past two weeks, I'm going to laugh. I'm going to laugh again, you know, because young man, young man, this is your home. I'm going to laugh again. I'm going to laugh again. Wow, I'm going to laugh again. But just the idea, you know, we have young people, Esa, myself, and then um, Swin Senior Vini, yeah. uh, with uh, the history, the different yeah. timelines, and the, the perspectives. And then, you know, we tend to agree on money. Uh, many issues, yeah. and I think yeah. that is that is very important because mm -hmm. at this time situation be Lula, um, Lula call for. Yeah. I'm a Luma de Frank Moine, um, you know, Ninsun generation, then Tolu for Hamne, then you already define Ninu in Yan, yeah, Akfan Len Joge, Aklan Len Buga, Ak, how do we want to live our lives? Right, yeah. Lulu, nobody can do that for you as an individual. You are I'm that personal decision. Yeah. Need no more helate, they can only helate tam it. Need them buga maga, them buga am security, them buga am, you know. Yeah. And we start to do that. But how do you do do def, how do you do that? Moene bena politics be therefore important and lot of politics be important. Moene um, people must have that opportunity to you participate. So we need to man I'm not a problem. Ah, uh, madam election, ma lose, madam court, court win them, ah, yo ya win them all. Because yeah. that's a process. That's yeah. a people, you get accept, you get them, lulu, no, no. So lulu lany wara, lulu lany wara support. The second part, money can, Africa, as long as the nyun, muna wa Gambia, sir. Muna nyun addressing socio-economic issues. Yeah. Fi te, hale yi, neku nji hol, aina, li, this is Eastern block, Western block. They don't, they don't care about that. No. What they care, money, why are they killing themselves in Bagui and yeah. everywhere? Mm -hmm. They want to live better lives. They want to tell us any AI. They want, because the world motor is. They don't they care want, about dogma. Yeah, they, they, they don't care about that. Yeah. In UTG, the other time I was teaching these kids about 1960, contemporary Gambian politics, and someone was telling me that's history. Yep. Because this person is more interested in what is happening in now. Present. So, so how do we get this generation? And I, man, I want to generation that are lucky yeah. because of course despite all the challenges you know, I'm not opportunity to be get educated in our own countries yeah. mm -hmm. I'm not the opportunity to understand where our countries are coming mm -hmm. from I'm not the opportunity to also have an international outlook you know, we are not just locals we are global yeah. and in that sense we how do we connect both of our critical why time it anybody from wherever it is you know, because at the end of the day yeah. hey, waste time in yeah. you know come look at our recruiters more man more somalia kureta I mean, it's, yeah. it's like young, young, Guinea, young Guinea is yeah. That's how I say it. Yeah. Because you, could it us what they do? They just remove and stop you from doing whatever you have to Everything do. Stopped. And then you limit self -defense. And nobody should allow that. Yeah. You know, people cannot seize what everybody have. Motor civilian leadership, it's a myth. Man, it's in Gambia. So I know the security sector is slow. Man, the security sector is slow. It's the civilian leadership. One, do they have an idea of where they want to go? Thank you. Secondly, do they, point. do they, you know, what Are is they their consulting politics? consulting the right people yeah, what, is their, what is their politics as well? Is it because all things, I mean, if, if the military was as bad as we claim yeah. during the transition, then this country would have still been, mm -hmm. you know, in, in, in disturbance. Yeah. But civilian leadership be, nyom, nyom, nyom wara make decision. Nyom len tana, nyom, nyom wara de flulu. Tay suny palimen vi, tay ngagis di file kele, you know, bohu benen topic la. But anyways, 
I mean, man, you know, is I'm happy, yeah. but then at the end of the day, let's continue, and then we hope ne, you know, Jamal is not again this year because Jamal soon again this year, time Jamal is in the soon you so Gambia them, so you don't know for them, and then at the end of the day, you time it, you know, isolate, so you both pass it Why time it? Be a passport to West Africa, then you ah. So West Africa's decision. Like, by the way, did they return your passport? To you? <laughs> I'm not. Don't know. Madam, now Europe, she didn't tell me. Madam, Madam, give up. Madam, give up. This protest. Don't know. Madam, give up. This protest. Don't know. Madam, give up. This protest. Yeah, I'm here. Six hundred. I will not be able to enjoy. I'm going to get into big. Let's have a good enjoy. I'm going to get into it. Anyway, Fatu Mandal Lima Wari Moine. I am one person, one soldier. Bo Hamne, I hate coup d'etats. We are small bubbles, and I want every Gambian. In fact, we are all soldiers to read it. Okay. Moine, you know, like the Makuri editor and so on. Why Lima Che Wari Moine? Um, coup d'etat of a nasty, of a nasty, of a treacherous. You know, you co organize. And you remember the five people you talk on, the Kyle Ninjaka coup d'etat, can choose zone, the Mwene Kali, the Mwenjaka day after 1994. You know, and uh, not only the Mahamli why I live through that day, the day of the coup d'etat, I was the only one senior officer at the bridge, the German negotiator, Solari, that day. And uh, they were like, is our lives or this government will come down. Mm -hmm. And then the only thing that is stable is because Bente and Fogne, you get exercise with the Americans. Yeah. If you the people with the bandits here and firing is at the bridge, the looting will start and we will see a worse scenario as we had in 1981. Mm -hmm. Calm down. You know say they are going to fight. The Americans are coming. Mm -hmm. Because we are supposed to do the same exercise with them. They have amphibious tanks. Yeah. They have, you know, machines that can destroy all of you. Mm -hmm. And if you kill one American, you are all dead. And that is what calmed the city. So. And I kept on battling that whole day, baby Matida, around 1 a.m. Yeah. Because some other day, Senegal, they were coming in. They amassed all their troops at the border. Mm. Coming to invade the Gambia that night. Sana Sabali and Edward Singati and Sadibu went to talk to Kebe to say, please, guy, why didn't he's not going to talk to them? Man, my captain, my charm, knew for them, and he listened to us. When I was in the Gane, Haleila, Munu, your former government, San Yuge Yahadikari, and he gave us an agent, New Toa Mombanyu, Chigudigu, everywhere to show him that there is no Yaha. And Chila called Abduju. Neko, no, it is not as bad as you guys. I have spoken to captains. No, how many Chiboka? Mota Manila, there was a window. Wo hamne in Niger. Binne soldari they were against the cool guys in Nekachi Palace. Wow. Chidigan Tebubu. Fufula intervention. Region. Why be soldari? We are together. Forget about it. 1981. 1981. So we say Senegalese mono dugasi te kabi. Majority of police officers and banjul refused to join the rebellion. Although it was the police orchestrated rebellion and the field force who were better armed, nyom boob then barricade hegan and area boob yep with say kunyo nyusutla, and they kill a lot of rebels, and that gave Senegal ne they are loyalists, and then they liaise with the troops that were in Farafene, nyom modunjai and they attack the country. And they stabilize. So, man, what I'm trying to just explain more, man, I hate coups. Mm -hmm. My book is all about how dirty, how nasty, how terrible coup is. Why not? Linga the cause of coups. Yeah. Then go a especially civilian governments. Yeah. Don't weaponize the judiciary. Mm -hmm. Don't even weaponize the armed forces because civilians can do that. Yeah. They use the security forces and kill their own people. Why? Ten chances to one. When you weaponize your security forces, mm -hmm. don't be surprised if they turn the gun on you tomorrow. You. Everybody, they were close to these people. Yeah. Um, Guinea was a double gun. Dumbuya was close. Yeah. Dumbuya. Yeah. 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 Samuel Do. Yeah. Suton, rioting women in Monrovia. When they were saying that the price of rice was too high in Uganda, told by Jolien order in April 1988 to shoot the marching women. 
in 1989 ñom samiel do ño duga ci palace bi an bu chahim so you know like don't don't use your military to be doing dirty things for you because they can turn the gun on you so you yep la so na civilian ci itam ñu try ñu setne ngour fok ñu bayyi yefi bour yalla you know in my book i am talking about the mansa kunda mentality from jawara regime was really passed to jamme mansa kunda babeli mansa and we should know that the president is a servant of the people you don't it's only in africa where government officials become millionaires rich filthy rich we are not supposed to be like that you should have at least something enough to keep you comfortably yeah. and after you leave the state protects you mm-hmm. you know bena house doy nala bena ka doy nala waye nga ne yow di nga amas 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 and most of the time if changes come and most of the time it doesn't come the way you wanted you lose everything you lose everything yes i have had president yami mu taw fi di wanan lima am ci alel suma sit strategy sax du ko ñu mëna jeexa mm-hmm. well, anan nak yeb yes i have seen that <laughs> but he has lost everything <laughs> sa da da was felt rich ñom ñom day were rich why bin deme rich comparatively at that time why jawara sax ko yaaya jamme joxto on a way to come back ni ko non hejna don day in poverty over there in england so you know greed bi mo ñu gitem ku nek da nga bëgg more than what you want lo xamne du la jëriñ ci dara nga ne wa man suma family suma family in fact bes bo fi joge sa family dañu yaaxa yep duñ duñ survive another generation pour keep that money you have stolen so we have to see government as ne da nga wara ñu service the people if you know that in your mind do corrupt do greedy do satcha do yaaxa te yo fi go head bi so mele nonu rek ñep dañu roñ ci yow because so ko defé duñ ko duñ ko mëna def sax jass la way li li singapore yi wonu singapore mo la 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 hmm singapore lan nga xala li amna ñu dal li dëssi bi singapore yi ci i want to go there sam du tok bo singapore yi ci sam sam du messi tok sam bul am problem no 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 i don't want to go there because okay, i don't want to be judgmental no dama la sonal so apparently that's what i'm going to close <laughs> let me just say thank <laughs> you very much for the session why it seems like you close him the name what i'm just saying is that the mansakunda mentality walu lay wonde ha nga yow ko ke ma laj la lolu ne nga ne jawara da fa pass jamme ne ne president ya la pass nañ ko baro ne president ya minister ya worsak la not the you know it's not worsak la pass na li service la to the nation ya gëna wara torox ñep in fact suñu la ni resigner sax da nga wara daw because of chono ngi nga wara daj pour ron ko non la wara mel way pour ne yow so toge especially bala nga wax sumay ku nek am sa gëweli bopa da nga am sa gëweli bopa am sa sëriñu bopa am sa ku ne you know those are the things that are missing us up if that doesn't stop believe me we are not going anywhere enjoyment i saw this girl in senegal mune so gise bugu sonko ñom ci sen mama ti mama mune sonko amul gewel ci gewel ya la ñoo tudde mune sonko amul gewel ñi am yeb ci gewel ya so sa ni gene mune sonko amul gewel da kala bu gey neke president fok nga am gewel waale fok nga am gewel dega so gewel yi no so la de ñoo neke di weyan ci mbedele yoy gewel yaangi ci nguur yi sax am la ñoo toga president bi tag ko wax ko lo xamne amul ci mom mune wa yow sa na la jo sa promotion dina la yobu fali Yeah because they know how to sweet talk their way into anything. Is it is that the reason why they money that win elections here because the studies will have gables. Sweet talk. Every day people are saying about Gabo Baro. This is the system I think this is the system I'm not Kenyan. I'm not Kenyan. This is the system change I think and the person has been talking about. Why am I gable? Why am I gable ku ñew di di taga khalifa sala di tagat ci liajara you never yeah, i know it's so really like that salangari am li senegal na ñom de ci torox parce que senegal ga gis xalé bu ndaw 25 26 mu kalaw door sikimam nan la def la wax waaw inna lam ñaan bi dina la wax cruz bi fi nalé nalé nek serigne bu maga maga mak fo nati ko xamné waron na dem takkat digam liggéey am xaliss ñu ko jox adia because of what 
<laughs> no, they are nonsense. Yeah, definitely. Oh, uh, anyway, I think thank I have you said so too much. Sam. Very <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much. I uh, said, you know, always great having you guys mm. on the show and Esther, of course. Until we come your way next week, inshallah. Good night to you all. See you. Bye bye. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Kafatan Nataram Bulolo, na GIA Cargo Complex Parendile, Proka Julia Sone Yandi, Kadunguni Funti Bundana Doko Sembentu Ya Banjul International Airport Toto, Mensi Nyafa Si Moluma, Melka Fengoluki, Bantala Banko Lukang, and Injulandingo Lufana. Faisi Sulan Nakago Doko Lebang, Katu, Masingolu Bembulule, Kafome Forklifts, Melka Selendron in Jindroke Baka Solula, Melbe Funti Kang Waranto Kaduna na Warehouse Lukono, Nadinkira Sumari Molufana Sotole Ifula, Mila Fano Mu Metari Kemeleti, Karo Bela, Adun is a Cargo Baka Solu Tanul, Mensi for ton town war ila sumaya fana fota da tembeleto menka fendolu mabono fo ikana tinya fo sene fengol lombang domori fengolo waranto jata kende ani bori ma fengolo kago baga solo la taradula kendo asulata jamani la bang korosir langolo lela na double view x-ray korosir la masengolo aka kago baga so kono kono jubele komi kago do ko sartoli ya landi nyameng nyin double view x-ray amu jamani la bang rapid scanaleti menka karafula korosiro keno kago sifa bela wati kilo kono to na doku lalo imu ayata karandingo leti miliela do ko no e faramansata kago do ko na tamandir nyato na do ko la betea wayam futandi ra3 makamoleto mensa tinna fo nze kago bagaso lo kinole kata uk and in eu banko lo kan gia ka hakeli tenkongo dila na do ko to ite nyina la men every day is a new opportunity to make sure our first impressions are always our best and to see possibilities on the horizon. To make our facilities and services more accessible and find freedom all around us. With a location proximity to active markets with a liberal air transportation policy. That daily pursuit is how we turn everyday opportunities for you. For all destination marketing support, customized packages for new existing airlines and operators and for a highly ranked tourist destination the Gambia Civil Aviation Authority is here to serve. We regulate air transport, operate and manage BIA technical requirements, merge with commercial considerations. We have experienced and well-trained aviation professionals 
to cater for your needs. For investment opportunities in building airport hotels, shopping malls, playground for children, do contact us on 4472-831, 4472-893. Gambia Civil Aviation Authority. We go beyond daily.